Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world, wherever you're tuning in from. Do not adjust your sets. We have got a new person on board today, Anthony Rivera. I hope I'm saying your name right. You did just well, just well. I've got my uh, my uh, aligners in as well, so it makes it a little trickier. Um, but um, fingers crossed we'll be able to communicate just fine. And, of course, the topic being tennis helps. Uh, Anthony is on the East Coast, am I right, in the U.S.? Yeah, in the tri-state area, just around uh, a couple miles from uh, the U.S. Open and uh, Arthur Ashe. Nice. Um, how does it is it for you watching the tournament in that time zone? I'm thinking about, obviously, Australia uh, right now. I mean, I guess it's it could be worse, but it could be better too, right? Yeah, you know, it's it's a little tough. The Australian Open is a little tough because most of the matches are happening. And, you know, during the week, it's it's very tough when you got to go to work in the morning. But you get to catch some of the highlights from the end of the matches. I still remember the uh, match between Medvedev and Nadal where I, I stayed up. And I was like, I, I don't know if I could do this. I wake up in the morning and they're still playing. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's uh, sometimes it just works out that way. The problem for you, I guess for you, and I've just thought of it as you're saying that, is the 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 finals in particular, and to some extent the semis, because of course what they do is they put them on um, a good time for Australia, you know, in early evening, and they put them on a good time for those in Europe, as in like, you know, but not ridiculously early in the morning, like nine, ten o'clock. So it kind of ticks at least two of the the big areas of, of viewership. But of course, if you're in, on the East Coast, I guess it's like four in the morning. And if you're on the West Coast, it'll be like 1 a.m. So this, yep. these, this particular finals weekend is tricky. But where you do, you are in luck, is the early matches, such as the ones happening that are just about to get underway. These are kind of nicely timed at sort of 6, 7, 8 p.m. for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, no, this is the perfect timing. And you know what? Uh, I think ESPN has done so well when they do show the matches is that uh, they will replay most of the day from about 11 a.m. On, on the East Coast time. So you're catching some of the really good matches that you may have missed while you were sleeping. So then you got that, and then you got the start of the next matches, as you said. So just before we went live, um, we had a quick chat about some of the matches that you've seen over the last few hours. And I was particularly intrigued about one because it's actually a match that we haven't really covered much about or performance we haven't talked much about, which is Paolo Badosa's uh, straight sets win. Um, and uh, I think you'd like to share some views on that. I mean, to me, it's a it's a nice way to return to the to the court and the, and the tour obviously winning over Taylor Townsend. Maybe you've got some thoughts as well on, on her performance, but this is a match that many of us didn't see, so I'd love to hear what you think. Yeah, she's definitely caught that injury bug over the last uh, year or so, and it's been a struggle for her. She had kind of gotten high up in the rankings before the injuries started happening, and I was really interested in seeing uh, where she could take her game. But like I said, the injuries just kept coming, and she has had a rough go. Nice to see it. it's her first win in uh, well, over six months, so it's nice to see her, you know, get back in the game, especially in the Australian Open, especially the way that she won. It wasn't, uh, you know, a tough matchup. It wasn't a three setter. Uh, nice to see her, you know, get back on track, and it, it, a nice little confidence boost for her as she, uh, you know, tries to get herself back into where she was about a year ago. Yeah, right. I mean, I I spoke to her in Madrid uh, in a press conference, and I think she was in a pretty good run of clay court form at that time. Uh, she'd just beaten Coco Goff, and we all know how her 2023 panned out. This was a real low point for Coco, although arguably it got even lower at Wimbledon before an incredible couple of months. But she comfortably beat Coco in what was actually a, a, a painful loss for the American, I would argue. Uh, lots of questions about the the the, the, for, the forehand from Coco, as we often get. But to be fair, Paolo was there to take advantage of it. Um, hi, Matthias. Uh, love to, lovely to have you on board. I'm not quite sure about your proposal, how that would go down. Nevertheless, if you do hit the subscribe button, it would be appreciated. Um, anyway, regarding uh, a little bit more on Badosa as well, I saw her uh, I play in Rome as well, which I believe was more or less what I would call her last match of the season. I think she did try and play one of the slams. I think it was Wimbledon, but it was just coming back far too soon from what was a pretty uh, serious back injury. 
And as a result, she didn't play again for the rest of the year. But I saw her in Rome play Ostapenko, and I think it was a three-set loss, pretty grueling on the on the clay of the Italian capital. And she was being pushed from side to side. And a few times at the end of points, I saw her crouch over into sort of the, the plants areas you often get at these tournaments in Europe. And I just thought she was tired. But looking back, it was clearly uh, a back issue. But really good for her. What about um, Taylor Townsend? Any thoughts on her? Uh, she's still coming along. Um, I, I haven't seen much of her play, but um, she did do well on first serves, uh, 66% over Paula's 63%. Okay. And, um, you know, she just struggled. Actually, her, her win percentage, I'm looking at the stats right now, on her second serve, Paula won 69% of those to mm -hmm. Townsend's only 27%. Ooh. So that, that's a tough way to go. And, and that's why... Bedosa had such a, I don't want to say easy match, but just the match she kind of needed to kind of, you know, give herself a little more confidence and get herself going in what was the first round for her of the Australian Open. So it's nice to see her, you know, get that type of performance, you know, out of the way early because, you know, if you have one of these matches, a first round match where it's a struggle, you know, you never know what kind of injuries can come back and, and to have her just get a nice little quick, easy one out to start, I, I think that's good for her. And, you know, Taylor Townsend still has a long way to go. So let, let's, let uh, you know, it, it, you, you go against Paula Bedosa, who's no slouch. She's not ranked right now, but but she's a, a tough play. So we'll, we'll see what happens with Taylor. Yeah, and Paula's ceiling is, is pretty high. I mean, her ceiling yep. is top 10 easily, maybe even top five. Uh, but that's a ceiling that she rarely, unfortunately, has reached in the last year or two. And she might have to reach it because she'll be playing Pavlyuchenkova in the next round. I think Pavlyuchenkova has had some good wins already in the tour in, in, in this year. Sorry, in fact, maybe even the last six to twelve months. I think she had a, a pretty good run at the French Open uh, last year, among others, and uh, she had a good win as well last night against uh, Donna Vekic in straight sets. Of course, Vekic, I think, was a, a quarter finalist last year. Uh, certainly, she went deep anyway. Um, but that is for another day. Let's get to. Uh, maybe a sadder story. Many of our audience are from the UK, so they'll have a vested interest in what we're about to talk about next. And I guess it's no surprise that the next topic is, as a result, Andy Murray. I'd like to talk about the bigger picture, and I'd like you to share with us some of the things he said to the media afterwards. Yeah, you know, uh, Andy, a lot of talk during, especially during the, um, on, on our uh, tennis channel that, that I have here was, uh, you know, Andy, anytime he leaves a match uh, after a loss, he, he never waves to the crowd, not, never really kind of acknowledges the crowd. Um, but this time around, and as you see in that picture, you know, big wave to everybody. We just don't know what's what's next for Andy. Uh, this this might be it. it. It's it's crazy to think about um, because when you think of you know men's tennis over the past two decades uh, or or maybe decade and a half, you know it's always been Djokovic, Nadal, Federer. And right around that area, you could throw Andy Murray in there because Andy Murray okay. was an important part, um, you know, of tennis. And he he brings that fire, he brings that energy. Uh, we've seen him even in even in losses, we see you know his his desire to play and, and still wanting to go out there. And I just don't know. And it's he's probably thinking of it right now. Maybe the body is telling him it's time. Yeah. Um, I mean, this this wave to the crowd also comes before his comments to the media afterwards, which was that he doesn't know if that was a, a goodbye to the Australian Open. Um, I know a lot of people sort of sort of feel uncomfortable about asking Andy or even discussing the topic of retirement. And this is not me or, or anyone who does want to speculate or talk about it. Um, not saying that I think he should or that, it, you know, it's up to Andy really when he wants to call it a day. It just depends on whether Andy wants to call it a day losing in first and second rounds of majors or not even qualifying for the majors, if you like, if his, if his ranking slipped so far. And that is entirely up to him. But I also think it would be kind of a miss not to talk about the elephant in the room. What do you think, Anthony? And feel free to disagree with me, by the way. No, yeah, it's... Um... 
it, it's really a tough decision, right? We're getting to the point now. I mean, we've we lost Federer last year, and yeah. you know, Nadal is not too far away either. Um, so you know, these guys have been staples, have been the top of the heap in tennis for so long. And it, I, I think we're coming to a point where outside of Djokovic, we really don't know who there can be to, I guess, kind of show some resistance, right? Cause it's always been the big three. Maybe Andy Murray can slip in there every so often, but you know, without, you know, two of the big three without Andy Mo Murray, the field is kind of open now in, in men's tennis. And, you know, obviously Carlos Alcaraz has come on and he's probably going to be the guy uh, if he can stay healthy for the next, uh, you know, couple of decades of, of playing tennis. Um, it, it, it's sad to see Andy go out this way because, you know, like I said, he always gave it his hardest. And, you know, he's such a passionate uh, tennis player that, you know, losing a guy like this, it, it's tough. It, it's tough for fans. And I'm pretty sure it's tough for Andy, who, you know, you would consider having a really good career. Yeah, right. Um, but it does feel as though, yeah, 2024 for some of these events might be a, a, a sort of a goodbye. Uh, he's got some points to defend, I think, coming up in Dubai. And then there'll be some challenger points to lose off. And uh, would be, you know, he could well be outside the top 50 or, or, or worse come come Wimbledon, for example. Um, and I guess really, he, if this is his final year, it is really all about Wimbledon. I mean, he was obviously here in Australia, probably not going to go beyond the third round anyway. But I think what made, listen, I fell asleep at about two all in the first set. Um, but it was, no, I think I, I was uh, drifting, if you like, through the first set. And I, Andy wasn't drifting, by the way. He was fighting, but that's probably what made the, the loss even more painful is it was just, as I think someone, a uh, ghost, he said in, in the chat earlier, you know, Andy was on his heels all night. And it, it just felt that, you know, a year ago, he was fighting with all every single last sinew. And he was probably doing exactly the same last night, but there was another yard slower. And I don't know, on the, on the hard courts, I, I don't see it. And of course, he didn't play the French Open last year. It was a, uh, a thing that he's done in the past. And I think he'll probably skip the French Open again this year uh, because he wouldn't want to harm his chances of at least winning a couple of matches at Wimbledon. And I think, again, our... Our expectations have been tempered. I remember a year ago after he got to the third round before losing to Roberto Bautista a in four sets. And we remember all those epic matches he had against Be Berrettini and, and uh, Kokinakis on route. That it was like, oh, OK, third round here, you know, final in Dubai. And then suddenly it was like, wow, if he can, you know, if he can reproduce this and get a bit lucky with the draw, then, um, you know, a second week at Wimbledon, you know, is certainly on the cards. Now it's like, can he win some tennis matches this year? And, um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 we'll see how it pans out. But it, it's a bit of a sad thing, and, and I don't mind talking about it. I mean, it's sad just because he's going. I don't mean, you know, as, he can lose yeah. every match in straight sets this year and, and say thanks and, and do the farewell tour. And I, I don't think it would damage his reputation as long as he didn't do it for too long. If he didn't go year on year, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and you know, rarely in sports – it may happen sometimes, but rarely when someone retires, they absolutely 100% go out on top, uh, you know, as a winner, as a champion. It's usually because, you know, the body can't handle it, too many injuries, um, you know, the skills have diminished. And uh, it, I, I hate to bring up Nadal again, but, you know, the year before when Nadal had, went on that run with Australian Open. Then he went uh, to Roland Garros and won that. And the thought was, wow, can he do, you know, can he do it all this year? Can he go? He made it to what, the semis of, of Wimbledon? Wimbledon? Exactly. And yeah. that's when the body started to break down. And he hasn't been the same since. So it's like, Absolutely. you know, instead of now being, oh, can you know, can the Don, the same thing we're asking about Murray, can these guys, you know, come back and, and get into the, you know, the third round, get to the semis, maybe give us one last chance in a championship match. And now is it, it's, you know, can these guys just get into another match? Can they make it to the tournament and stay healthy? So these are the questions that we're going to, you know, see a lot of 
uh, as the year goes on and progresses, because, you know, obviously this is the first, you know, major tournament of the year. And um, this could possibly be, you know, Andy's farewell well tour. Um, if he decides not to go to uh, Roland Garros and just skip that completely and end it all at Wimbledon, um, I'm pretty sure he would be happy with that, uh, ending it at Wimbledon. Or, you know, you never know where he... Maybe he goes to the U.S. Open and and gives you know America one last hurrah as well. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with Andy. But I I think that maybe we're both in agreement that this is probably the last time in Australia we'll see him. Yeah, yeah. I I mean he's even suggested it, which 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 says something to you. I'm just not sure how many losses that is in a row. It's two. It's two this year. Two matches. Two losses. And then yeah, Demonor. Uh, so he beat Hampton. So it's one, two, three, four losses in a row. I mean, you know, they have come against some pretty good opponents such as Dimonor and, and Dimitrov, among others. But, um, you know, two of those losses doing uh, with the other two were against Echeverdi, one in Basel, and then, of course, the one here. And he's ranked. Melbourne. Echeverdi's ranked, so. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, although hardcore. You know, probably his yep. seeding at 32 is is a bit more based on on his clay court performances than hard court. But nevertheless, Andy Murray, um, we wish him all the best and, and fingers crossed we get to see, you know, uh, if this is his last year, then um, some pl plenty of highs as well as, you know, the obvious losses that may well come. OK, I, actually, just one more thing on on sort of retirement, Anthony, as somebody who crosses a lot of different sports uh, and I do, too, but perhaps mine are a bit more Eurocentric than yours. I can think of Pete Sampras uh, in tennis, who kind of accidentally fell at the top. In other words, his last, I think, Grand Slam was a win at the US Open win the title. But it wasn't like, this is my last US Open, and he ran all the way to the final and ended up winning the tournament. It just ended up being his last tournament. Uh, we've seen the, the situation with Nadal. You know, perhaps the best thing in hindsight, we just don't know what's going to happen in the future. And we still don't know what's going to happen this year, but that, that moment on the, on the, on the rostrum in, um, in Paris, uh, 18 months ago, of course, that would have been a great way to say goodbye. But then of course, at, the, at that point, as you highlighted, calendar slam was still on. So, uh, it would have, it would have been uh, unusual to do that. But now looking at some other sports, I can think of, uh, Michael Schumacher in, in formula one, who, who retired, didn't win the championship, the year he retired, but he was kind of on top of the game, if you like, before making a comeback. And then the comeback was kind of ugly. Um, in football, we've seen players retiring. And, and to some extent, I think whatever happens with Messi, and I know he's not retired yet, but we'll probably remember the crescendo of his career being the World Cup last year and yep. so on and so forth. Uh, what about in other sports, particularly in North America, maybe baseball, maybe basketball, uh, sports that maybe American football that I'm not so familiar with, Anthony? Have you got one or two stories you can share of, of good retirements and kind of they went on a bit too far? Oh, man. You know, I can I think of. In, there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I can think of in baseball, you know, guys like um, Albert Pujols or, or Miguel Cabrera. These are, you know, Hall of Fame type players who, you know, continued to play throughout the career yes they've won their championships and they've won their awards but you know by the time by the end you know the skills had diminished um you know they maybe were making too much money and it just it it, it pretty much had to end at a certain point thankfully uh for a guy like albert pujols he got to go back to the team that he started with and, and won championships with and in his career there. And it kind of was a nice little uh, send off for him and a, as well as Cabrera. I'm trying to think of, of some bad ones and you know, they, they, they're just not coming to my head off the top of it right now, but I, I, I can I mean, think that there are some, Michael, uh, you know, Jordan, what was his sort of goodbye? Like, um, it, it, I want to say that it wasn't great because he had actually retired. He, he originally had retired with the Bulls after winning a championship, but decided to come back and played for the uh, what at the time was the Washington Wizards. And his he was not the same when he came back. And it just like you maybe you should have just stopped when you did when you won a championship. And he, he you know, he ended up coming. I can think of another, uh, Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady had won the Super Bowl with the Buccaneers after leaving the Patriots. A great story. And the whole thought was he was going to retire at that year. He ended up coming back, and then they lose in the first round uh, of the next year, and then he retires. So it's like sometimes the guys want to push it one more when it's like, you know what? This could have been it, and, and it, you could have rode off into the sunset. So th those – now that you had brought up uh, – um, uh, Michael Jordan, the Tom Brady one, did come to my mind, and uh, he and he's a Hall of Fame, you know, legend in the NFL world. Uh, but the way it ended for him, um, he was better off leaving the year before, where they had left with a championship. I think basically the the thing is, it's just you just don't know, and yep. and the, the regrets are both. You know, you you'll regret if you retire too early. I think in Schumacher's case, for example, he had two retirements as well, and the first one maybe he retired too early because he could have carried on for another year or two. I think the problem was is he then had three years out of the game, by which time he came back and maybe was a second slower. And on top of that, you had some young guns doing very well, such as Lewis Hamilton and and uh, maybe some to some extent Jensen Button and and, and a few others. And and he was way off the pace, and it was kind of a bit a bit of a, a sad show, but it's just impossible because you know you can also leave it too late. I think with with Andy Murray though, just to sort of bring this one to a close, I think it's kind of whatever happens this year, it 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 won't be too late. We'll still have some great memories of this comeback after the hip injury, none more so than those wins in Australia that I mentioned earlier, and and we don't have them. If, you know, and the, even the Davis Cup uh, winning against France earlier this year, or sorry, uh, in September of last year, you know, we don't have them. We don't have some one or two good matches that he had also at Wimbledon and so on and so forth post hip injury. So, and he won a title, I think it was in Antwerp, if I if memory serves me right. So the comeback wasn't a complete waste of time. Far from it, he's brought us, you know, some memories and he still might bring us one or two more this year. And so then, I, you know, if, if I Andy Murray went on another two years beyond that and like i say he was just trying to qualify then then it might be worse but i think he's he's kind of allowed to to do what he likes for at least this year and see where it leads him um by the way uh, i'll share on the screen basically some of the scores that are going on we are here of course sort of building up towards eager against uh sophia kenning um do you have any thoughts by the way on the eager uh kenning match i mean i guess a lot of us are thinking it could be a comfortable win for the poll uh i i i want to say yes um and, and this i know we had talked about this and and put out the video uh today about oh, you know yeah. players that we think could be um i i come back come back players that could possibly win a championship and i know kenan was in there with yeah. Radicanu uh and andrescu but uh man uh, that's a tough draw to get Ego Swiatek in the first round of the Australian Open. That's going to be mightily tough for her to win this one around. But uh, I, I, I would like to see, I would like to see some fight for sure from Kennan and, and you know push Ega. I don't want Ega to feel too comfortable off the start of this tournament. So if, if she could get, give her a little push uh, in this matchup coming up, uh, I would really um, in, enjoy that because you know just a straight you know, beating would be uh, un unfortunate for Kennan, for sure. Yeah, with um, with Iga, you, you you do tend to get those those quite a lot. No, that's not her fault that, you know, she's got to win these yeah. matches. And if you're up, if you're up 6-2, 4-1, you can't take your foot off the gas because you never know what can happen in tennis. But fingers crossed, we do get at least a, a competitive encounter. And who knows, I've actually even posted a poll in fact, let's have a quick look at that poll right now uh, on YouTube um, just to see if people can sort of maybe uh, guess how the outcome of this particular encounter will go. I've got, um, I think, uh, four different options, and it was kind of uh, based on how many, how competitive we basically think the match will be. And we've got how many games will Ken and win? Uh, and I don't want to want to make sure it wasn't too disrespectful. So I included the option, of course of ultimately winning the match but as you can see it's fairly fairly evenly spread across at least three of the options as in winning a few games to winning a set uh with 14 percent uh suggesting she might win the match often these polls are like who's going to win 
Uh, but I yeah. thought that that might be a little bit too lopsided. So I wanted to bring some balance to the occasion while still offering people the chance, such as Ghosty, who I know uh, I'm sure clicked on She's Winning the Match. Um, okay, uh, let's just have a quick chat as well about another match that I didn't catch much of uh, yesterday. And also, we didn't really cover much on some of our review shows because it was still going on live as we were recording those, uh, which was um, the match between Felix Ogiali Seam and Dominic Team. Uh, Felix emerging in five sets. I remember as we clocked off for the day or the night or whatever time it was at around the end of the fourth set, I did think that it kind of had Felix in five written over it rather than team in five as it was heading in that direction. Um, what did you make of that particular encounter? I know I caught the ending of that match and Felix had been leading, uh, but then he kind of blew the set to take it to a fifth set. And um, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen much from TM since mm -hmm. his win at the U S open. He kind of really has not been the same. I, I feel like since that win, um, what was that? 20, I'm going to say 2020, 2020. Yeah. Uh, so it, it just, for him, uh, it's been a lot harder to come back than I thought it would be. I, I thought that he was one of the top guys uh, in the, uh, the the men's rankings, and he just has not been able. I don't know if it's it's just a continuing amount of injuries for him as well, but he hasn't been able to get back to the form that he was when he did win the U.S. Open. And um, Felix, you know, I, every time you think Felix is going to break out, there's just something that just holds him back or like in this match where he, he kind of like lost that fifth set. So it, it, it's hard for me to gauge on what we're going to get because Felix is so up and down uh, throughout the tournament. Yeah. Uh, Vegas dev, by the way, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're a subscriber, but if you're not a subscriber Vegas, you can click on that subscribe button and you'll get the pleasure of seeing that number tick over to two, five, Three, you can do a little dance. And if you're still not happy, you can unsubscribe and see it go back down to 252. How about that? In fact, if everybody tuning in right now, if you all want to play games and start unsubscribing and resubscribing, just to see the influence you can have over our ticker. Um, anyway, uh, regarding Felix, yeah, it's a bit difficult to, to know whether this, how much this win means. I mean, if Felix ends up going on to make the second week, yeah, I thought you probably already had, Vegas. Uh, I, I was pretty sure you had, but I just thought I'd ask anyway. Um, Jake asking, where is Damien? Damien, I do hope is, uh, resting both his vocal cords and maybe whatever other parts of the body he requires, because he will be on when we do Radu Kanu against Shelby Rogers. Of course, Radu Kanu was in and amongst that group of players that we mentioned earlier, uh, Anthony. And I think you went for Radu Kanu amongst those three, right? As, as to who I did. Might go on and yeah. Slam. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I did. I think that, um, and I, had the pleasure of uh, seeing her, you know, win that U.S. Open title uh, not too long ago. And I think that she has all the talent in the world. Uh, another one that's coming back for it. it uh, most of these guys are just coming back from injuries or, or, you know, girls are coming back from the injuries. But I always thought that Radicanu is probably out of the three. I think that she has the most talent, uh, yeah. a lot of power uh, in her, her swing. So, um, I'm kind of hoping to see, I mean, it would be nice for all three to get an opportunity, but I even said in the video that with the emergence of, you know, Sabalenka and Coco golf, and you got Suyatek at the top, you know, it's going to be really hard for any three of those, any one of those three to win a, a championship and look at how far, you know, you know, Layla Fernandez has kind of, you know, fallen after that mm. run she had in the same U.S. Open. She we haven't seen her as much. And it's tough. The women's, you know, the women's grouping is is very, very tough. The rankings are tough and you got a lot of great players out there. And, um, you know, I, I think that uh, Radicanu can break it. I would like to see her get in there. But uh, it, it, like I said, it's, it's just a tough go. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think all of us who put our kind of hands up to answer this question, we're all like, just hang on a second. The only thing we're not doing is we're not saying Emma Raducanu is winning a Grand Slam and she's doing it in the next couple of weeks or or anything crazy like that. But, you know, the, the question quite smartly from Nick was framed, like, if 
one of these is winning this winning a, a slam which one are you are you going for and, and most people i think we had a couple of polls out there with a few hundred votes across them uh around about 50 55 percent uh, uh were, were going for emma and then the the other two were on about 20 25 percent uh between or, or each i should say uh and I, that kind of seemed seemed to be the consensus among the the talking tennis community as well as as, as you and, and me and and damien and a few others uh, all shared our thoughts. I know um, that Sophia Kennan got at least a uh, a vote from Miles, but but I think you're right with the with the raw talent. It, it did feel as though um, uh, it does feel as though Emma's the one at the top of the tree on that one. I've got some scores going up on the screen right now. By the way, I don't know if there's any matches today. It doesn't have to be one right now, Anthony. But are there any matches today that you're you're particularly looking forward to? Um. I I'm gonna even be going through this whole listing. I I don't I wasn't seeing anything that has been up yet. I don't think they have played yet. But I was uh I was definitely on the women's side. That's for sure. Um, if I yeah, can pull I mean, on the women's side, up I'll, I'll I'll share some of the matches coming up as well. Actually, I'll tell you that might help us all to give us an idea of some matches that we're looking forward to or not looking forward to. Of course, you know one that interests me, and neither of them are ranked. But okay. Angelique Kerber and uh, Danielle Collins is oh, yeah, uh, yeah. definitely an interesting match because these are two girls, and especially Kerber, who's who's won uh, championships before, um, and now is now unranked. And then you got Danielle Collins, I uh, who hasn't been ranked. I don't know how, when was the last time Danielle Collins was ranked. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I probably around about just after she got to the final of Australia in 2022. I'd have thought. Yeah, it's just crazy. That's how crazy the women's rankings is and how good we have uh, and are blessed with some of these great women tennis players that it is consistently shuffling. Outside the top 10, you have a consistent shuffling of, of players. But these two here, um, I I, saw, I actually saw Angelique Kerber win the U.S. Open um, back around, I think it was like 2016, 2017-ish. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I thought she was great. Uh, then I, I don't know what has happened since I know she's, she's had a baby and, and I think she took some time off. Um, but, uh, if you're looking for a match outside of the very big names that are right there and, and outside of the rankings that, you know, maybe might surprise you. And I think you would enjoy, I think Collins Kerber is, is one of those. I agree. And I'll tell you what I like about that pick is that they've got very different playing styles. And you know what I, I what came to me when you were sort of talking about um, some of these players on the women's tour is that their, their peaks, with the exception of the top five, I would say, which are just unbelievably consistent. So, I mean, Sabalenka, we all know how her Grand Slams, I think it's five Grand Slams in a row now where she's made the semifinals or further. We know Pagula, we know about the quarterfinal thing that P Pagula may have, but she's also getting to the quarterfinals regularly, or at least the fourth round as she did in New York. Uh, we don't even need to talk about Iga and, and to... Elena, you know, Rabakina as well, um, despite the fact one or two wobbles in the second half of last season is still a constant threat, as we've seen at the beginning of this one. Um, and Coco, I mean, just incredible last six months. So those five aside, who we probably all think about going deep in this particular tournament, from you could look at about another 20 players, and including Daniel Collins amongst those, whose ceiling, and Emma Raducanu, whose ceiling is incredibly high. If Emma Raducanu has, you know, the, the match of her life or, or just plays to her absolute, you know, top level, she wins against most opponents. And the same goes for Daniel Collins. These The ball striking, Collins and, and Raducanu were very different, but they do have a lot of similarities in their aggressive game style. And so many of these players... Kerb is very different, but we know what her ceiling is. She's won Grand Slams before. Sloane Stevens, similar case, by the way. Sloane yeah. Stevens' match just getting underway. And it was 2016, so you were you were pretty much on the bottom regarding uh, Kerber's win uh, in New York. So that's the thing. And I mean, you know, Zachary and and um, Jabur and and Kinwen Zhang and, and... Madison and Keys. Madison Another Keys. One. Albeit, unfortunately, that she's obviously not playing in Australia this year due to due to injury. But yeah, so you could go on. And, and and by the way, I could just get a list of the top 50 or top 100 players and, and we could just 
look at every other player and go, their ceiling can be or compete with most players. The problem is, is their ceiling, you know, Daniel Collins in particular springs to mind. It just doesn't happen often enough. But we've got quite, quite a few uh, Daniel Collins fans amongst us, uh, including Ghosty. And I, I spoke to Daniel in um, in uh, November. Uh, we had a quick interview uh, in Seville in Spain, a couple of minutes, maybe a bit more. And uh, we chatted about Australia more than anything else and how fond she is, not just of the fact that she's done well in the Australian Open, but just how much she enjoys playing in Australia, where I think she's got some friends, certainly, there. So that's a really good one. And the contrast of styles, Kerber is a little bit more on the cautious side. So that is going to be interesting to see if she can frustrate Collins. I really enjoy that one. Let's share on the screen as well some of the other matches to come, and then we'll come back to some of the later scores. Uh, if at one later score we have is Stevens and Gadetsky, which are on serve. Camilla Georgi against Azarenka. Uh, Holger Rune gets his uh, campaign underway as well. Grigor Dimitrov against Fucevic in the Battle of the Slices. I'll just go through these matches and then I'll come to you at the end and you can just say, ah, that's also a match I'm looking forward to. Elena Rybakina against Pliskova. Uh, Rybakina's form this year has been pretty sensational, albeit she did have a, a, a loss against her name last week. But I wonder if that was induced by the fact that she needed to keep her legs fresh. For bigger assignments to come, Rebecca Marino uh, up against Jessica Bagula, all German affair between Sverdov and Kupfer. And uh, Rod Laver Arena, I think that is, uh, maybe last one on Rod Laver Arena. Uh, so in about probably about 12 hours from now, Richard Gasquet, another guy who may be uh, calling it a day sooner rather than later um, against Carlos Alcaraz. And yes, Tom Janovic getting underway. And we've got some other matches here. As you can see, Kazakina is already a double breakup on um, the unfortunate Peyton Stearns. Unfortunate, fortunate, but just because she happens to be a double breakdown for no other reason. And uh, Mickelson is also up a break on McCabe. Uh, Ostapenko begins. Uh, Collins Kerber, love that call, by the way, Anthony. Adu, uh, Raducanu Rogers, I'm intrigued by because I think Raducanu, as I touched on earlier, could go anywhere between third or fourth round or even go out at the first hurdle. We'll see. But I'm probably tipping an Emma, Emma win, and that is coming up on the channel later on. Saf Yulin, uh, who's in really good form at the moment, up a break already on Greek Spore. And Lajovic is down a break on uh, Zepieri. And uh, Kochi Rieto is on the verge of winning the first set uh, over Sun, although he is uh, trying to defend a couple of break points. Okay, back to you. What matches from all those that I've just sort of reeled off um, also intrigue you, Anthony? And I'm definitely going to stay within uh, women's tennis right now, but uh, definitely Georgie Azarenka uh, yeah. is is one of them, and uh, Rabakina and Pliskova, uh, another one. Um, you know, four really good uh, tennis players uh, right now. Um, we know where Rabakina has been uh, getting her ranking at number three. Pliskova has been. Uh, one of those top ranked players as as well as Azarenka, um, who has, you know, had a better run over the last year uh, playing tennis and, you know, to go along with Georgia. I think that's, I think those are two good matches that go along with the uh, Collins uh, Gerber match that I talked about. And, you know, just cause, you know, they're in Australia, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of backing behind Tom Janovich there as, as well. So, uh, She's going to have the crowd going and it's just nice to, you know, uh, Australia goes wild for their, for their players. So to see, to see that, to see the crowd, get the crowd going behind her during that match, it's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, indeed it is. Um, uh, we've also spoken a fair bit over the last few hours about, uh, Osaka against Garcia. Yeah. What were your thoughts on that match, either from the Garcia or, uh, Osaka perspective? I don't know if I'm really surprised by it. Um, I can never tell with Osaka, especially during press conferences, if if she's down uh, on the match mm. or mm. if it's just her, you know, normal demeanor. Um, I don't think she should be down. She's just six months from having a child, and to come mm -hmm. back and play in the Australian Open, um, I, I think is a good enough feat for her as well. Let her get her feet wet. Let her get her back. Uh, get back in. There's a whole year's worth of of tennis for her to play and to get back into the form that she wants. Um, 
not even Serena Williams, I don't think, came back that fast and, and was playing that well uh, when she came back from, you know, having a child. So it's going to take some time for Osaka. Uh, she's won the Australian Open, I think, twice already. Um, and uh, yeah. the hope for um, her is just just get, you know, get herself into you know tennis playing shape I'm, I'm and and get back on there just keep playing and get yourself you know ready for uh what is probably going to be rolling garrels next for her if if you know if all else works but uh you know just uh i i'm not too worried about osaka i just hope that she's not down because i know that she gets down on herself a lot and you know that's you know coming back from what she did it, it it's not necessary she's working back from this uh you know after having a kid six months ago let let her get back into form and and continue her rise back to where she's been yeah absolutely i mean it's a pretty good resume whatever happens absolutely to her, to her career i mean uh a, a grand slam uh every year from 2018 to 2021 and uh, you know, if you threw her into the mix of that question that we posed earlier, I'm sure she would get a lot of votes and maybe even emerge. Uh, she would have got on, my vote. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think she might get a lot. She might end up being top of that tree, and as a result, maybe we we could or we we or therefore we shouldn't include her in that in that question. But I, I think it would have been interesting to to see how much she would have split the votes and maybe even gone top, especially as you suggested, Anthony, she would have got your vote. Uh, just back to some of the latest scores that are going on. Uh, we will have Matthew joining us shortly. Matthew, uh, for those of you who remember, he took us through the uh, Madison Keys von Drusova quarterfinal in New York last year. And uh, uh, for those of you who remember, he's a pretty 100 miles an hour guy. So I'm very much looking forward to having us talk, uh, him talk us through the match between Iga and Sofia coming up in about uh, 30 minutes or so from now. But some of the latest scores we've got, Zapata Morales and Lehetska are on serve. Uh, the Frenchman, uh, Cazo, and I apologies for the pronunciation if I'm off on that one, is up a break on Les Logera. Uh, Cam Noy and uh, Varilas seem to have been at um, on serve in the early stages of their match for quite some time. Um, maybe the scoreboard isn't updating or the, the rallies are lasting a long time. Vesely is up a break on Arthur Feast. That may be a surprise to some. Uh, Mickelson is a double break up on McCabe and uh, Zepietti remains a break up on Lajevic. And I know we've got somebody in the chat watching Safi Yulin, uh, who's leading 5-2 and actually just two points away from winning the first set over uh, Griegspor. Anthony, I want to get some thoughts on the latter stages of the tournaments and your kind of predictions overall. Um, let's stick with the women and then we'll go to the men. What are you, who, who have you tipped to win the tournament? Um, I think it's going to be Sabalenka. Okay. I really do. I, I, uh, I'm I'm going to go with Sabalenka here. I know she was very frustrated after losing the U.S. Open, and um, she's always hard on herself. And I think she's going to come out here strong. She won last year, and I think this is a, a tournament for her. I, I kind of like her draw. I know that it, it, she. I think I I saw that if she was to get to the uh, semifinals, that it would be against a Coco Golf. So that would be an an, an interesting rematch. Um, and um, mm -hmm. I, I think that she and on this court might be able to might be able to take uh, Coco Golf. Although I, I love Coco Golf too. Um, it it the, the, just like we've talked about this women's this whole women's uh, division is, is just uh, something that I just enjoy watching with all these great women on here. And we'll see what happens with Swiatek. I think that would be a nice kind of finals if we can get a Swiatek Sabalenka finals um, yeah. I would definitely be in line to watch that for sure yeah I think as well as somebody whose name I didn't mention earlier but have to talk about when we talk about ceilings which is Ostapenko uh, because her ceiling is is good enough we know to be eager um, and she, she's done four times in a row against that I think it's a four or no record she has against the pole um, so we mustn't forget her and I think she might be in eager's way at around about the quarter final the, but the the thing is with these ceiling players is that they also have a uh, an opposite of a ceiling, a floor. That's mm -hmm. what the opposite of the ceiling is, of course. And I see Safiulin has indeed won that first set over Greek sport. Um, and so it'll be interesting. But I think Sviontek's run, it, what makes this interesting as well on the women's side, Anthony, is the fact that 
I think if you gave Sabalenka the draw that Iga has, I would have a lot of concerns about her making the final. But Sabalenka's got the slightly kinder route. Uh, I would probably want to avoid uh, Rybakina in the semifinals if I was Sabalenka. And equally, I would also want to avoid uh, uh, Rybakina if I was an Iga Sviontek fan. And yet, Iga's the one who gets Rybakina on her side of the draw. That's not to say that Coco can't cause a lot of damage, as we saw to Sabalenka at the US Open last year. But again, from Iga's perspective, uh, Coco has a, sorry, Iga has a very favorable head to head. It's something like eight and one over uh, Coco. So that's one thing. So I think Sabalenka's uh, route to the final is is more negotiable than than Iga's. And so I understand you picking her. But arguably, then you've got to think about Rabakan. I mean, Rabakan's form is very impressive, right? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, for sure. Um, she is definitely a uh, tough go. I think she's uh, ranked third in this tournament. Um, yeah, exactly. If I'm correct. Yep. So uh, Rebecca is going to be enough tough go at it. Um, and I'm pretty sure she, like you said, she could give uh, Iga as many fits as possible uh, on that court. And we, we've seen, you know, Iga kind of, I don't want to say the, I, I don't think crumble is the right word, but when someone, you know, really gets on her like a Rabakina, then it, it's a really tough go for, for Iga to kind of get going uh, with her game. It kind of like just takes her right out of it. And um, that it's kind of like her kryptonite almost. Yeah. And of course she knocked her out in Australia a year ago. So yes, indeed. I I, I think um, probably of the four players, you know, also Iga and the, and the other three, and let's throw in Pagula as well. Uh, so of those four potential opponents for, for Iga at various stages of the tournament, the one most likely to cause her trouble would be uh, Rebecca. And a lot of people might say yes, but she played a lot of these these players uh, in um, Cancun last year and she swatted them all aside. I don't think she dropped the set en route to that title. Uh, and there were a few bakery moments too. But that was a kind of a unusual, crazy tournament. I don't know if you remember the conditions they had there, Anthony. Yeah, I... I... I didn't get to watch the, the the tournament, but I know that there was a lot of weather uh, <laughs> issues that the the players were not very happy about. That's for sure. Indeed, indeed, indeed. In fact, let's just take a quick uh, two minute break, actually, and then Anthony and I will just sort of finish up before Matthew joins us. But we'll take a quick two minute break and remind ourselves of some of the conditions that uh, Eager managed to battle through. Uh, in Cancun as she took the WTA titles final.
to back to the present day i've got some of the scores there on the screens uh sloan stevens has taken the first set in these this first round encounter that she has with gadetsky of course these are all first round uh, encounters but we'll be wrapping up the first round over the next 12 hours or so so this is the last of three days of course this year for the first time in australia where they've split it out over there kazakina is a double break up on peyton stearns uh stearns they're trying to get it back to five two as she leads 30 love. And uh, as I mentioned before, I think Cochoretto took the first set over Radovic. And uh, Trevisan and Zarusa, uh, Zarusa, and I think Zara Sua, I should say, is the first Mexican qualifier or the first Mexican to play main draw for at least 20 years uh, on the women's side, at least anyway, uh, in Australia. So that's good news for her. And she's actually on serve at the moment against the uh, slightly more recognizable, uh, Trevi San. I know Trevi San has one or two fans in the chat as well. Over on the men's side, let's have a quick look at some of the latest scores there. Uh, Lehetsko is serving for the first set, 30 love up on Tabata Milares. Uh, Kaz o has beaten or has won the first set, I should say, uh, against Les Logier. Les Logier fans, stop having your heart attack there. I made a slight mistake by saying he's beaten Les Logier already, which will be pretty impressive in 45 minutes. Um, uh, Safiulin has won the first set over Greek Sport. Greek Sport, of course, is the CD player there, but I think for many observers, um, Safiulin will be the favorite. Who knows what is going on in this Cam Noe Varillas match? They are taking forever to even just reach the halfway stage of their first set, and maybe there's been a lot of juices as they have here on serve at two games. All Varillas, of course, or Varillas, I should probably say, uh, uh, a Peruvian as well coming up against Cam Noe. That would be a Pretty uh, jolting uh, result should Cam Noe go out in the first round. Um, and Noe has shown some signs of recovery in, in recent weeks. We'll see if he can continue that today. Vesely is serving for the first set against Arthur Fees. I'd be really interested to know some thoughts of people in the live chat who are actually watching that Fees match because um, I am not. And uh, Zepieri is for serving for the first set over uh, Lajovic. So, uh, Bad moment for the Serbian players in action right now with Lajovic uh, almost a set down to Zepieri and Les Logier already a set down uh, in his first round match. Back to Anthony and I. Anthony, I'd like to get your thoughts now on sort of the latter stages of the men's tournament. We spoke briefly or we spoke at length about the women's side and, and your thoughts there with, with Savalenka going all the way. What about on the men's side? Let's start with let's start with Novak Djokovic winning in four sets and hoping to win his eleventh crown. Can anyone stop him? I don't think anyone can stop him in his uh, corner of the uh, of the tournament. Uh, I'm just looking at the I'm going down the list of that side and I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. I think that we are. Yeah, and now that I say this, it probably won't happen. But I, I am going to be selfish. I, I, I want to be destined for Djokovic Alcaraz in the final. Like I, I feel like that is our new Nadal Federer rivalry. I, I think that that those are the two guys that have to face each other in the final if they're one and two on the opposite sides, uh, you know, of the of the bracket because Djokovic has beaten already, uh, Sinner. And he's beaten Medvedev, and he's you know he's beaten Titsipas. He, he he's beaten these guys who, and, and some of them like Titsipas, who I I think it was maybe the French Open where he had a two set lead on him and lost it. Like yeah, when you have Djokovic where you want him, he always seems to come back. But I think the guy that gives him the most trouble is uh carlos alcaraz and and i think that that's the match that you know i am always wanting to see in in the final if it's possible yeah i think i would have 
I certainly felt like that in September during the US Open, that there was only one man that was going to stop him, and, and that would be Carlos. Um, I think I'm probably a little bit bigger on Sinner maybe than you are. I'm not saying that Sinner over five sets, and I think five sets is the key here um, because I think it changes. I think Sinner indoors in the form of his life, as we saw in October and November, can be a match and maybe even beat Novak in those conditions over three sets. But there's a lot of variables that they have to go the way of Sinner, as you can probably tell from the way I framed it. Australia, five sets, Rod Laver Arena, somewhere that that Novak, um, you know, it's been, I think he's only lost there once in, in, a, in the best part of 10 years. Um, similar to sort of centre court in a way at Wimbledon. The aura that he has and the doubts that we have with Sinner physically as well over, over such a, a, a grueling situation suggest Novak would be the favourite. But having said that, if Sinner is the semi-final opponent, and I think he may well be, um, then then it poses some questions. I'm not suggesting that, that Novak won't win, but at least it'll be a bit trickier than what felt a very comfortable path to the trophy last year. There's also potentially Ben Shelton, I think, in the third round, um, which could be interesting. Yes. Uh, first up, of, of course, is, is Popper in. And give, give me some thoughts on Ben, actually, and, and how maybe he's viewed by the American public. Yeah, Ben had a, a wonderful run uh, to that uh, U.S. Open, um, you know, final against uh, Djokovic. And I think he just, then he just ran out of steam in that, you know, all of that, all that pomp and circumstances to just get him there uh, kind of, you know, faded away. Uh, once he had to face uh, Djokovic, and and you, we all know you don't give Djokovic uh, much margin for error because he will, you know, take over. Uh, ben Shelton, very young, uh, he's got nice power uh, from from what I saw in some of his matches, and um, I still think he has a long way to go. Uh, but a nice, it would be nice for him to get to that round and face Djokovic again after, you know, losing to him in that final. Yes, indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, uh, regarding Shelton, I should just tweak my 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 comments. It's it's round four where he could be a potential okay. opponent. Um, but nevertheless, you know, three or four, uh, he's there. Before then, Alexei Popperin um, will definitely be in the way in round two. I can see Popper in, you know, with the big serve and the weapons he has, you know, maybe in front of a home crowd being inspired and, and getting a set. But maybe I'm being a bit too optimistic for the Australian. I think the odds are about, uh, I'll, I'll put them in a percentage. Anyway, I think Damien was telling me it's like 95-5 as a percentage. Now, the way we do odds in North America and, and in Europe and, and also the UK do vary. But um, hopefully those odds have been transmitted by me giving them percentages. Uh, round three will definitely be Monfils or Echeverri. Mm -hmm. We all know how it goes against Monfils. I think it's maybe 19-0 and 0, or it could even be 20-0, and 0, the head-to-head -head between Novak and the Frenchman. So... Um, for those of you that perhaps want a slightly more difficult opponent, you might be hoping for Echeverri, but on a hard court, I, I, I don't see that being too difficult. So maybe of the two matches in rounds two or three, Popperin might ask the most questions before possibly Ben Shelton, of course, who emerged in straight sets over RBA. Quarterfinals, Sitsi Pass, semifinals, Sinner, and then Alcaraz Medvedev in the final. Now, there are other players in the mix there, of course, that, that may knock out some of these other players, but it's just a projected route to the final for Novak. Give me some thoughts on these three players. Anyway, these are three players that will also be hoping to stick their hand in the air and, and potentially um, win the tournament or at least make the final. So Holger Runa, Daniel Medvedev uh, or Yannick Sinner. Um, give me some thoughts on any of those three players. I'll go with Medvedev and, uh, you know, he's an interesting player because he, he get, he can get to the final, but he has had such a hard time, you know, finishing the match and in one, probably was one of the greatest matches and finals in Australian open history against uh, uh, Nadal a couple of years ago uh, where he blew the two set lead. And, and, you know, if you're going to beat Djokovic, you're going to have to do it in three sets. If you're up by two sets, because he's not going to, he's not going to give you any room uh, after coming back down a set. But I, I think for Medvedev, a lot of it is mental for him. I think he lets the fans get to him a lot. If they're not cheering for him and, uh, 
I, I don't know. I, he's a guy that I feel like has so much potential to be that top guy for a while. And it, everything comes down to his mentality. It, you know, he, he'll go up against the fans or if they're not cheering for him, he'll get frustrated about it. And, and that's something that I would hope that he kind of gets away from and starts just zoning in and focusing on, on trying to finish up these uh, uh, matchups. But uh, he's definitely a guy that I always keep my eye on outside of uh, uh, Djokovic and Alcaraz. I think that I would put uh, Medvedev as that third guy uh, in, in, in the uh, tournament to win. Okay, so he's third favorite. So for you, it's Djokovic favorite, Alcaraz second, Medvedev third? Yep. And then who are you putting fourth? Would you put Sinner or Runa in fourth or someone else? I would put Sinner fourth in that group. Yeah, fair um, enough. And if I could throw a, a wild card that I would like to see um, kind of move along uh, is uh, Francis Tiafo. Uh, I love his game. And I would like to see him go deep into these tournaments. He, he he's slowly but surely been doing it. Um, but I, I'd like to see him take the next step. Uh, he's got all that energy in the world. He, he him opposite of of what I talked about with Medvedev. He gets the crowd going, and and he he feeds off of them in, in a more positive way than than Medvedev does. So if we could see something from Tiafo, who's I think uh, next matchup is against. Uh, is it Machach or I don't know how to say his last name? Have, um, yeah, Machak. Yeah, Machak. The, the Czech. Okay. Yeah. Who I, I confused yesterday with another Czech player, as, as we can all do, as all these matches are flying around, especially when they're happening during the night. But um, yes, uh, that is going to be a tricky one, though, for Francis. I will say that. But uh, he had a good win, Francis, in the first round over Borna Choric. And Choric, again, a, a, a player on his day can cause most players on the tour problems. Although I would say it's probably been about 18 months since since he's really been, you know, flying, if you like, just before the US Open when he won, uh, somewhat surprisingly, Cincinnati um, in 2022. But yes, uh, it would be great to see Francis have a good run. I feel as though Francis has been... I, I heard Gil Gross talking about him recently, and I couldn't agree more, where... There seemed to be a little bit lacking in the vibe and energy that you were talking about there that he we know he can bring to the court in New York. And he sort of emails almost got a bit subdued in that match against Ben Shelton that they had, I think, at the fourth round stage yeah. uh, at Flushing Meadows last year. But um, fingers crossed uh, we can see him bring the vibe back in 2024. Uh, talking of vibes, make sure you uh, do hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, click that subscribe and below the screen, uh, you or the corner of the screen, I should say, you'll see that wonderful little subscriber ticker tick over, as we've already seen it, creep up a couple of notches already as we enter the last sort of few minutes before uh, Matthew joins us. I'm really looking forward to having him talk us through the eager uh, Sviantec, uh sophia Kennan match. By the way, on that particular topic, um, uh, I will Anastasia. She's just sending me a private message there. Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, uh, you can, I think Anastasia, you can maybe even share it now and I can even take it on and off. I'm having a private conversation with Anastasia backstage. Uh, but yeah, you can even maybe share it now, Anastasia, and I can sort of take it away and, and bring it back as and when, but anyway, um, yes. So we'll have Matthew joining us very, very soon to uh, bring us uh, that particular blockbuster. Let's have a quick look at the poll that I posted uh, regarding that. And so if those of you who are not aware, there is a poll here for you to get voting in. The winning the match percentage has crept down a little bit to now 9%. And the 0 to 5 has shot up. Because if I remember rightly, I think the first three categories were all on about 29% uh, not so long ago. So a lot of people now are uh, a little bit more down on Sofia or a little bit more up on um, on uh, Eager. So that is to come. Uh, but just the last couple of minutes before you go, Anthony, um, we spoke about some of these players, uh, but we didn't talk about Holger Runa. Um, I mean, do you like watching Holger play? Is he someone that excites you? Is he someone that you think on his day, you know, in Australia, for example, that could beat Novak if he had an incredible run all the way to the final? I am not too familiar with Holger Rune and his play. I know he's one of the top names out there, but I haven't really been able to see, you know, uh, much of his of his matches. Um, you always get concerned with 
anyone who plays Djokovic. And it's always for me, it's when he, I'll believe that he could beat him when I see it. <laughs> you know, when I see that he can beat a, uh, a, a Djokovic, I'll believe it. In the same kind of, you know, vein as, as Sinner and, and Medvedev as well, and Titsipas and all those guys that have kind of fallen prey uh, to Djokovic. But uh, it, Rune could make a, a, a run here. And um, I'm trying to pull up where he is on the uh, standing here. It. If I can yeah, find, I can find it, it here. He has, he's playing it obviously in a few hours from now. And he, he has a fairly winnable, I would say, as you would expect for someone to see it as highly as he is. Uh, first round up against uh, Nishioka. Uh, I then do think that uh, Les Logier or Cazo uh, in the second round would be okay. But things do get a lot more tricky for him. And one of the problems I have with Runa and, and going far in this tournament, and, and I know that... Um, Damien subscribes to this notion is that he does have a very tough draw from the third round onwards. I would expect his third round to be against either Arthur Fies or Raphael Safiulin. Um, and there might be the end of his run, which would be the third round, which for him would be disappointing. Because, But I mean, by the way, Arthur Fies did lose the first set, so um, he might not make it that far. But Safiulin is up a set and a break on, break on Greek's ball. So the third round against either Safiulin or Fies for me would be particularly tricky and would be marginal favourite for Runam, not much more. Uh, in the fourth round, uh, he could be up against Zhijing Zhang, who be her catch. Uh, Menchik as well as a potential opponent for him there. Ugo and Bear. Any one of those four is a, a tricky one. And then before you know it, of course, you're in the quarterfinals. And from that moment onwards, it's also extremely, extremely uh, tricky. So, yeah, that's the problem that Holger has uh, in, in my eyes. And uh, I'm just trying to see who he might be playing in the quarters. I think he's in the lower half of the draw. So uh, Alcaraz, Medvedev could be a semi-final opponent. And I think... I think, yeah. I think Medvedev is, is this quarterfinal potential opponent. So, yes, I'm pretty sure it is. So, yeah, uh, a lot of tricky ones there. And I think Sverev is in the same half of the draw. So that's also a potential person who could knock out Runa. So the main issue he has is these potential uh, banana skins, if you like. Um, Anthony, um, big thank you for joining us today, by the way. Really pleased you managed to uh, stick it through. And I really look forward to having you on again very soon. Oh, I definitely appreciate this opportunity. I love uh, talking tennis when I can. Uh, I love interacting with you guys on Twitter, and I guess that's how we linked up, uh, basically. So I, I appreciate this opportunity uh, the first time. I always wanted to cover tennis, and I got an opportunity to do it tonight. So I really appreciate it. Anthony, I really hope we have you on again soon as well. It's been great uh, chatting tennis with you. And um, yeah, thanks very much for joining us, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. So I can see Matthew uh, ready and raring to go backstage. I'll bring you forward in a few seconds, Matthew, um, and we can have a brief chat uh, ahead of the match that Matthew's going to be calling between Igor Sviontek, the world number one, who is unbeaten since about October. Uh, maybe Matthew can correct me on that one when he, he does join us in a few seconds. Uh, but it's been a pretty lengthy run, around about 15, 20 matches that she's won in a row. And, of course, quite a few of those have involved bagels and breadsticks. Um, but who knows? Maybe uh, Sophia Kennan will be the one to uh, bring that run to an end. Uh, although I will say this, our audience don't have a huge amount of faith uh, in the Americans' chances here. Just 11% there suggesting uh, she's going to take the W today. Uh, whereas a lot of you suggesting that uh, she might take five games or less. Uh, Stearns is now 3-0 up in the second. Thank you for that ghosty. Nice little update uh, there. I'm going to close a few of these windows so I don't get confused too much. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the latest scores and then I'll bring Matthew front stage. 
Uh, Lehetzka is up a set and a break on Sabata Morales. Uh, Leslo Gera is trying to get his way back into that match, having lost the first set. Cam Noe is serving for the first set, so they did get a bit of a race on to kick on through. Arta Feast lost the first set against Vesely and is on serve in the second. Safi Yulin is very close to taking a two sets to love lead over Griegsbor. Lajevic fighting back. He's up a break in the second set over Zepieri. Mikkelsen and uh, McCabe remain on serve. And on the women's side of things, uh, I should share the screen there now. Stevens is very, very close to sealing her spot in the second round. Uh, Trevisan lost that first set in the end to uh, the Mexican uh, Zaru Zua. Uh, so that's an interesting one there, particularly from the Mexican stance. Kazakina, yes, thank you for that, Ghosty. Uh, in fact, Peyton Stearns is threatening to go up for love there. Love 30 now on the Kazakina serve. And uh, Radovich or Radovcic and Cocciaretto are very much in a dogfight in the second set. Uh, the Italian winning the first. Okay, let's bring Matthew front stage. We've not seen him for a little while. Not since I think it was, was it Madison Keys against Von Drusova you were commentating on, Matthew? Yes, yes. Uh, and that seems like a long time ago now. Uh, but <laughs> it's uh, it's great to be back. Thank you for uh, thank you for having me hop on here. It's a, it's going to be a really really fun match. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's a great one. I mean, we we've, we've been chatting for a few days about potential matches, and of course, with you in the US, it makes it a little bit easier to talk about some of these matches that are happening at this time of the day rather than other ones at other times of the day. But still, I do think this is a is a it's an interesting one. I mean, it could be a very comfy win for Eager. But it's interesting because we've got a couple of names, a couple of previous Grand Slam winners, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's amazing when you look at the slams here these last couple of years on the women's side. We are just having so many blockbuster matches in the first, second, third rounds, early round. Um, I, I was thinking a match from Wimbledon from last summer that I did. What was it? Second or third round uh, with Anne Jabour and Bianca Andrescu and that felt like that felt like a semifinal uh or something so uh, we're having a lot of these blockbuster matches in the early rounds on the women's side because there's so many quality players uh that are either low seeds or not seeded at all and that's how we get of course uh Shviantek and Kennan here tonight in the first round Absolutely. I mean, uh some of these names have already been mentioned already but we've got grand slam winners that are sort of lower ends of, of or even outside the top 100 we've got people with incredible ceilings that bounce around between sort of five and 20 in the world such as ostapenko who on any given day can beat anyone we've got return grand slam winners that are coming back into the game whether it be naomi osaka or angelique kerber of course osaka sadly her run has already come to an end but she put up a very good fight against uh garcia um Cool. Anastasia just saying that they're not on court yet. No woes. In which case, Anastasia, good idea. Just um, refrain uh, from uh, showing anything until they, the end of the court. A good idea. We'll keep these live scores up in the meantime. Matthew, have you managed to catch any of the tennis over the last 48 hours? I know it's pretty difficult for all of us with, with other jobs and other sports to cover. Uh, <laughs> and, and also when these matches are going on through the night. But any results that have stood out for you? Well, uh, Murray playing... What do I call that? Yesterday? Last night? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know I what know. to call it yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he, he always uh, demands such respect and so many eyeballs. Uh, was watching that last night. Uh, certainly caught Coco Golf um, and get her first round win. I guess that was yesterday as well. We'll just call it yesterday <laughs> for, the, for the sake of uh, being clear with everybody. But uh and of course, Coco, you know, that that was a big win for her because remember how much she struggled in the early rounds in New York do, last yeah. summer, and we know what she went on to do. But uh, it, it's so interesting the early rounds of these slams, uh, how you expect them to go. You expect a lot of these early round matches to be one way traffic, and they turn out not to be. Sometimes Djokovic losing a set, uh, losing a set. In his yeah. first match, who could have seen that coming? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what are your thoughts on Paul Andy Murray? I, 
I, I mean, you just you watch him and you think it's amazing that he's still out here and competing so hard and in the Australian summer heat. Uh, you do wonder how much he wants to continue to put up with doing what he has to do to be ready for these slams. But anytime he's on the court, like I said, anytime he's on the court, he demands so many eyeballs to be on him. Uh, and, you know, all the opponents want to play him, want to share the same court as him. Uh, it would be nice to see him win some matches like what we seen yesterday, win a match like that here and there, which he's still very capable of doing. Yeah, right. Um, I spoke to Anthony uh, a little while ago. We'll we'll keep just chewing the fat while um chewing the fat. That's a, a Cockney rhyming slang. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, Matthew. <laughs> Let's have a chat. Have a chat. Um, so we'll keep chatting and, until this match gets underway, and then I'll I'll let you call it from then on. Um, but um, we were talking about retirements and some of the legends of other sports, Matthew. Can you think of? Some in either in tennis or, or even elsewhere um, where they've timed it just right or maybe they've gone on a little bit too long. Any names that spring to mind across all sports? Oh, goodness. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of names that I could pick out on that. I, I'll say this. And as you know, I don't know how many people watching would know, but, you know, I cover so many sports yeah. and something that is somewhat similar. This is going to sound really weird, but hear me out. Something that is somewhat similar to tennis is auto racing. It, it's, it's very much a team sport, but on the, on the racetrack, it's very much an individual sport. Um, and when it's an individual sport like that, a lot of people, a lot of athletes could get into saying, I, I know I can still do this. Even when, you can see the talent is wearing and he's he or she is getting older. And I, I think a lot of, I, a lot of people in auto racing uh, that has stayed too long because they think I can still do it. Right. Um, and you could go all over the place on that. The first one that comes to mind, of course, in the United States where I'm at, of course, NASCAR is King over here and the King of NASCAR, Richard Petty, who won 200 races, but he didn't win a single race the last eight years of his career. People look at him a lot when you talk about that conversation of staying too long. Yeah, right. Um, Michael Schumacher is somebody I touched on as well earlier, someone who, yeah. who maybe called it time prematurely and then unfortunately came back and came back too late. So he kind of got it wrong on both in both ways. And we've had a few uh, stars of sport, you know, retiring and coming back. I mean, Michael Jordan, I think, was mentioned earlier, who had a couple of retirements. And we've got the three faces on the screen right now. I mean, I know Dominic Team is a few years younger. We've also got Stan Bavrinka, and Bavrinka's defeat was very different in that it was a five-set loss to somebody who's probably a little bit higher up the food chain right now in, in Manorino. So, you know, maybe there's a bit more optimism regarding Stan. But yes, um, questions amongst fans anyway, um, if not so much in the media about Andy's future, have been raised. And fingers crossed anyway, he can have a, a few more memorable wins this year. Thanks, uh, Anastasia, there for prompting us that the players are warming up. Eagles won the toss and elected to serve. Um, I'll, I'll pose one more question for you, Matthew, and then I'll... Um, uh, disappear backstage. Anastasia and I will sort of co-produce, I think, at, at various points. So we'll always be here to um, to give you a quick 90-second break to rest the, the voice, which I'm sure you'll need. Um, any final thoughts on, on Sviontek? I mean, we've got, you know, two favourites, I guess, for the tournament overall in, in Djokovic and, and Iga. Um, do you have both those players winning the tournament? Djokovic is so difficult to pick against in Melbourne. <laughs> uh, he, he, he just, uh, I, I struggle to remember when he hasn't won this tournament. Uh, Sviantek is so interesting, isn't she? She went out in the fourth round here last wow. year. In fact, she's been out fourth round three of the last four years. Okay. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how she hand. I mean, she's got a tough road here. She's got Kenan, here in this match tonight, she could have Angie Kerber in the second round, another former Australian Open champion. So this is a very tough road early. Now, as you well know, and uh, many of the people watching know, when 
when you have players that get tough draws like this early and they get through it, they normally catch fire once they do get through that first, uh, those first couple of tough matches. And and you mentioned it earlier; she hasn't lost in forever. Shviontek yeah. quarterfinal uh, in Japan last That's September, right. the last yeah. time she lost, she lost to Kudermetova in a three setter. So uh, <laughs> she's on quite the streak. She is indeed, yes, and she looks pretty focused here in this image I've just. Uh... Uh, seen on social media, uh, media. she entered the court uh, just a few moments ago uh, to take the court to warm up ahead of her match against uh, Sophia Kennan. Matthew, uh, big thanks. I hope you're going to be all right just for a couple of minutes before the first serve does get thrown. Uh, I'm going to turn on my laptop and, and tune into the match and um, uh, have a good call. And, and anytime you just need a break, Matthew, just say, and we're going to take a short break and either Anastasia or I will press the button to give you that much needed break. You remember how it worked last year. It wasn't that long. Although it feels like a long time ago, I'm sure hopefully you have some good memories and and we're we're here just to just to pull a few of the things, strings backstage for you, all right? Thank you as always. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. So, we are uh closing in on getting this one underway. Sophia Kennan and Iga Swiatek. And again, just a blockbuster first round match. They played a French Open final against each other in 2020. And it's so interesting what the world was like in that 2020 final and what we were dealing with all across the world. But in the tennis world, you had Sviantec was very much still an unknown. She was ranked outside the top 50 in the world entering that French Open. Kennan was coming off of winning the Australian Open earlier that year. And then they meet in the final, Sviantec wins, and it's been this Cinderella run to, of unknown to a slam champion. And then all of a sudden, after that, she's become the best player in the world. She has been on an amazing run since winning that title in 2020. And then on Sophia's side, since... That loss in the French Open final, a lot of struggles with injury. She fell outside the top 200 at one point. Uh, it definitely has been a tale of two different stories since these two clashed in that Roland Garros final four years ago. Uh, less than four years ago. When was that French Open played? <laughs> that seems like a long time ago now, 2020, of course. That was played... Feels like August or September or something like that. And that's the only time they have met Sviantek and Kennan before tonight. And we are ready to watch this one unfold. And it will be Sviantek to serve first with a hot pink cap. And in the far court, Sviantek to get us started. Ball toss up, serve down to the backhand reply of Kennan. Cross court goes Sviantek. Two and a backhand by Kennan is good, just missed. Good depth on that shot, just missed it wide. Sviantek gets the first point. Mentioned the long winning streak that she is on. Has not lost since September to Kudermetova in Japan. She just waits out a breeze and now serves at 15 love and goes too deep. On the first serve, and of course, throughout this match, we'll keep you updated with other matches going on around the grounds. As Sviantek gets set for this second serve. Ball toss is good. Serve out wide to the backhand of Kennan. Backhand by Sviantek was good. Open Kennan up. Defensive shot, and the backhand hit hard up the line for a winner from Sviantek. And it's 30 love right out of the gates here for Iga. Mentioned fourth round exit for Sviantek in three of the last four trips to Melbourne. Game does fit the courts here in Melbourne well, at least you would think. Good serve here. Kennan's reply well short of the net, and it's an unreturnable served up by Sviantek. 40 love. And we know the powerful ground strokes that she has, but has gotten so good at defending as well over the last couple of years. 
serves here at 40. Love body serve that Kennan can't reply to in play, and it's a hold it love to start for Iga Sviantek. And a good start for the number one seed. So we'll see Sophia Kennan serve for the first time, 25-year-old that represents the United States. And again, made that terrific run to win this Australian Open in 2020. That was, of course, just before the coronavirus pandemic. Made the French Open final, as I mentioned, that year as well. And it's just been so difficult since then. Mentioned all the injuries, dropping a ranking dropping below the top 200. It's been a long road back, but she's now closing in here towards being a seeded player at these slams. She's ranked 41st in the world. So if she could pull the upset here and have a good tournament, would be looking at getting one of those 32 seeds for the French Open. And she's set to serve for the first time after a change of ends. And from the far end, her first serve into the net. Got all the way to number four in the world after she won that Australian Open four years ago. Second serve is in to the forehand reply of Sviantek up the middle. Two-handed backhand from Kennan. Backhand is deep from Sviantek and then pulled wide by Kennan, but backhand too long from Sviantek there. And it's 15 love to Sonia Kennan, as you'll hear be called a lot. Resides in Pembroke Pines, Florida. Serves here into the net, as many tennis players in America do. They live in Florida. Great place to train and practice, and <laughs> great weather there most of the time. Serve up the tee. Good return by Sviantek on the forehand. She goes cross-court. Now Kennan with a big cross-court forehand. Sviantek gets it back, now sets up the backhand straight up the middle. Backhand rally here from Kennan. Off forehand from Sviantek, chipped back by Kennan. Up the line goes Sviantek, hits a backhand winner. And it's 15 all. So good at just releasing that backhand straight as an arrow up the line. Hits so flat. And Kennan's going to have to do a lot of defending you would think, if she's going to stay in this match. 15-all. Toss-up from Kennan. Served down to the backhand of Sviantek. Oh, it's a return winner. She didn't hit it all that well, Sviantek. Wouldn't say it was a miss hit, but she didn't hit it the way she wanted to, but still able to direct it deep into the corner. And Kennan could not retreat fast enough to get to it. And it's 15-30. Kennan puts in the serve that Sviantek makes on the return. Now a forehand from Kennan up the line. Sviantek defends it back, but it loops long. And it's 30-all. And Kennan is being pushed here in her first service game. Thirty all serve here from Sophia Kennan with a dark blue visor on, blue top. High ball toss, serve out wide was really good. Sviantek somehow made the return back in up the middle from Kennan. That Sviantek gets back cross court. The forehand from Kennan was good. Sviantek defends it back. Then Kennan releases and unleashes on a forehand up the line. And it's a winner, and it's 40-30 for Sophia Kennan. She looks to battle back from 15-30 in this opening service game. It's going to be first strike tennis for a lot of this match, you would think. Two very hard hitters as Kennan serves up the tee. Sviantek's return floats long on the baseline, and Kennan does hold from 15-30. She holds on for one game all. Kennan played the, well, a couple of warm-up tournaments, and then Hobart lost her second match after beating Greet Menon in the first round, lost to Daria Saville in her second match 
in the Hobart Invitational. Also played in Brisbane, where she lost her first match in two tight sets to Rodianova. So it hasn't been the cleanest tune-up to this Australian Open for Sophia Kennan. Plays a lot of doubles as well, as you know. That does show up in her game as well. One all in Sviantek to serve. In the near court for the first time. Out wide the serve that Kennan blasts long on the return and it's 15 love. I would think Sviantek, she's, she's seen some players now. This is day three of the tournament. And she's seen some highly seeded players get pushed in their first round. She's been sitting back and watching. She serves into the net here. So she's not going to take anything for granted here, you would think, in this match. Certainly against a player of Kennan's quality. Second serve is into the backhand of Kennan. Forehand hit flat up the middle by Sviantek. Dug out by a slice backhand of Kennan, who now goes cross court with a backhand and hits a winner. That's a well struck shot there by Kennan. Trying to get into this return game as she hit it cross court right on the line. Has that power on both wings. Sophia Kennan does. 15 all. Full court in the sunshine here with the first match of the day, of course, and the roof open as the first serve is into the net. From Sviantek, 15 all. At 1 all in the first set. Second serve, kicked up the tee. Kennan with a short reply back. All forehand, Sviantek comes to the net, gives Kennan a target, but her backhand is into the net, and it's 30-15 to Sviantek. Like I said, we'll uh, keep you updated with other scores from around the grounds here. Uh, just before we popped on here for this one, Cassett, Kena, and Stearns we were keeping an eye on, and Peyton Stearns now 5-3 up. In that second set, looks like she'll be forcing a third set with Cassett Kena. Sviantek serves to the backhand of Kennan. Good return. Forehand up the line. Sviantek up the middle goes Kennan to the backhand of Sviantek. Off backhand. Well struck by Kennan. It's a winner, and she is into this return game. It's 30 all. That's two really big backhand winners in this game. One went cross court. That one. On an off backhand, good inside out angle to it. It's 30 all, and Sviantek being made to work in this service game. Serves out wide. Kennan's return sharply struck. Sviantek's forehand lands in the doubles alley to her right. It's wide, and Kennan will have the first break point of this match. Well, had to work hard to hold her serve in that opening service game, Kennan, but now here she is with a chance to strike first. Here is Sviantek with a deep breath here, facing an early break point. Toss up, serve down, up the tee. Kennan's return is good and deep, and Sviantek puts that forehand into the net. It's an early fist pump from Sophia Kennan, who has claimed the opening break of this match just 10 minutes in, and Sophia Kennan has the lead two games to one on Iga Sviantek. And that might not have been in the early script here for Iga Sviantek as Kennan plays a really good return game there. Hit a couple of terrific backhand winners and then really good return there that led to the Sviantek error. So it's Kennan with the opening break. Uh, they're just underway on Margaret Court Arena with Casper Rude and Albert Ramos Vinolas. They are on serve three games in. Uh, John Kane Arena, Dimitrov and Futsevich will be starting here shortly. Stearns has won that second set from Kasat Kina, so that's heading to a third set on Kia Arena. Stearns and Kasat Kina. What else do we have? Cam Nori took the first set from Juan Pablo Maria 6-4. 
And as always, we welcome you to leave comments in the comment section. I'll try to I'll, I'll try my best to pay attention to them. I do promise. <laughs> I, I'm still I'm still getting used to keeping up with a comment section that's right in front of me. Normally I have to click onto it. Great to have you all with us here, wherever you're at and wherever you're popping us on, whether you're deep into the night or early in the morning, as Kennan serves with a break advantage. Good return by Sviantek on the serve, but it just misses wide. It was a nice sharp angle to get Kennan on the run. Is called out, and Kennan, 15 love, serving at 2-1 in this opening set. Looking to consolidate the early break. Serves out to the backhand of Sviantek, and that return is whipped wide, and it's quickly 30-love here. And we were talking, too, just before the match started, how many of these popcorn matches, if you will, we're getting on the women's side of these slams in early rounds, and it's happening more and more, it seems, as Kennan misfires on the first serve looking up the tee. But two Grand Slam champions in the first round like this doesn't happen often. Second serve is in. Attacked by Sviantek with the forehand. The forehand by Kennan. Cross-court backhand Sviantek. Backhand by Kennan hits the let cord and gets a tight response. It bounces back on her end, and it's 30-15. Kennan goes to the towel to just wipe away a bit of sweat from the brow as she knows this is an important game. Hard to believe, what, 12 minutes into the match, and this is the fourth game, but this is an important game now that she's up a break and looking to consolidate. Good serve up the tee, and Sviantek's return is straight into the net. 40-15, and has the chance to consolidate right here and go up three games to one. Not an overly hot start to this day. Temperatures mid-80s. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek's return is cross-court, loops in. Big backhand by Sviantek, puts Kennan on the run, and Kennan slaps a backhand into the net. 40-30, and the game continues. Of course, we're... Very used to seeing very, very high temperatures for this Australian Open in the summer down under, but certainly seems like there's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow, and it's going to cool off temperatures quite a bit. And then we're going to be in the 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit range. Serve out wide, short reply by Sviantek to the backhand of Kennan, and miss hit by Sviantek on the backhand, and Kennan does hold serve and goes ahead three games to one in this opening set. So a very positive start for Sophia Kennan. And she'll look to continue to apply the pressure on Sviantek. Just talking about the temperatures, it does look to be high 60s Fahrenheit, of course. Uh, Thursday and Friday then kick back into the 70s for the weekend. Uh, Sviantek is set to serve at 1-3 in this opening set. Number one player in the world down here early. Far court she serves out wide. Kennan with a sharp return. Sviantek scoops it back short. Then a drop shot from Kennan is well placed and well played, and it's down for a winner. That was a great return somehow by Kennan. And it puts Sviantek on the run. Kennan able to get to the net. Good hands on the drop shot. Love 15. Sviantek serves. Goes to the body serve and misses long. Second serve coming here for Iga. Tosses up, muscles it. Out wide, backhand reply from Kennan. Up the line goes Sviantek. Defending shot from Kennan is short. Sviantek gets to it and shuffles it over without error on the backhand, and it's 15 all. I know there was a question up in the chat section. How many games will Kennan win? 
Let's see. I'm just looking here. 47%, so almost half, said 0 to 5. Well, she's already at 3. <laughs> see, we, we, we really don't know anything. We like to think we know things as sports fans, but we really don't know anything. That's the joy of watching it as the first serve is into the net from Sviantec. Second serve coming here. Kennan just steps up, hugging that baseline. Second serve is in. Kennan attacks it. Big backhand goes long. And it's 30-15. Just reading through the comments here. Try to get to most of them as we go on. <laughs> John talking about turning his back for five minutes, and he misses this. That's right. Big serve here by Sviantek. Good return by Kennan, and the forehand released long by Sviantek. Had most of the court to open with there, and misfires on the forehand side, and it's 30-all. Getting into this return game, too. Shviantek hasn't come off, uh, hasn't come out. All that sharp. Good serve there. Then she hits a great backhand. Defended back by Kennan. Cross-court backhand by Shviantek as a winner. Threw her body into that backhand. And it's 40-30. <laughs> Comment about uh, from Jake saying, me and Ghosty only talk nonsense anyway. <laughs> I, I'm glad you have fun here. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Game point here for Sviantek. Serves into the net. Down a break here early, as you see. Kennan once again just takes one step forward to the baseline. Sways back and forth. Second serve kicks in. Backhand reply from Kennan was really good. Sharp angle. Sviantek's backhand just misses... The line, and it is Deuce. Having to work hard here as well. Was confirmed out on uh, our screen here. Wasn't all that close. And the Deuce serve from Sviantek, and muscles it up the tee, but misses. Second serve coming. She's won 80% of points on her second serve here through the first four games in change. Second serve here is in. Good deep return by Kennan. Whacked back by Sviantek. Defending shot by Kennan. Big forehand by Sviantek. Kennan pops that up, and it will drop wide eventually as Sviantek was backpedaling and looking to the heavens to try to find it. Comes down wide in the doubles alley off her left tip. Advantage Sviantek. Trying to stay within a break. In the far court, Sviantek. Toss up, serve down, and again misses. Oh, no, no, she didn't miss. Boy, that looked out. But they play on. My mistake. And a backhand winner ripped up the line by Sviantek. And she does hold serve. Four, two, three. I'll try to catch up on these comments here. Let's see. A lot more. <laughs> a lot more than I've uh, seen come through here. I have it down here. Might have been late to it. And, yeah, so, okay. I brought up Richard Petty. That, that tells you about my background. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Obviously, you could tell that, uh, yes, I do live in the States and I do live in the South. Not many people that don't live in the Southeast of the United States will get that. Uh, we'll give you a Richard Petty combination with tennis. That doesn't happen often. Uh, Jake saying, welcome back. We've missed you. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Murray should retire at this year's Wimbledon, a comment. Yeah, well, a, a lot of talk about that. That would be, of course, the place where everyone would like it to happen, I think, just to, to make it feel like one of those grand retirements, give him the sending off that he deserves. Uh, certainly that is something that you have to think is in his mind. Pandemic messed up a lot of things. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, a lot of things. Like I said, I, I can't remember when that French Open was played now in 2020. Seriously. Was it played in September or July? I, honestly. I, I remember watching Sviantek win it. I don't remember that much else from it, actually. Is Here's Kitten serving at 3-2 after the change of ends into the net. Second serve coming here from Kennan. Up a break here early. Serves to the back end of Sviantek. Great return. Kennan scoops it back, and then Sviantek with a wide open court smacks a forehand winner into the deuce court. And it's Love 15, Sport and Politics commenting. Hi, everyone. Loving the commentary. Well, that, I'm certainly glad to hear that. Fucevich can trouble Dimitrov, well, that's for sure. Fucevich can trouble a lot of people. He has the game to do that. Served by Kennan up the tee, and Sviantek's return is mishit and into the clouds. I'm not sure if it ever came down, and it's 15-all. Try to keep you, uh, everyone updated on what Futsevich and Dimitrov are doing over on John Kane Arena. 15 all serve from Kennan out wide and powers up there with an ace. First ace of the match from either player. And it's 30 15. Casper Rude 4 1 up over on MCA against Ramos Vinolas. Uh, and Futsevich with an opening break, it looks like, on Dimitrov. Opening game break for Fucevic. Here's Kennan serving out wide. And that's another race, too straight. And she gives a little fist pump and a twirl. As back-to-back -back aces gets her to 40-15 in game points for 4-2. Feeling good early. What was that that Coco Golf said yesterday? Looking good and feeling good. Kennan, big serve here. Muscles it too strong. Stearns and Kasatkina is underway in their third set on serve in the third. Served by Kennan out wide. Sviantek, good sharp return to the forehand of Kennan, which missed long, and it's 40-30. Cam Norris set and a break on Juan Pablo Varias. What else is going on? Trevisan lost that first Set to, and apologies if I butcher this, Renata Zarasua, I'm guessing. Forehand return by Sviantek. Big backhand by Kennan up the line. Sviantek gets it back short. Off backhand by Kennan. Scoop back by Sviantek. Keeps the rally going. Backhand from Kennan to another lunging backhand from Sviantek. She's in the rally now and hits an off forehand winner. How did she do that? Uh, I mentioned earlier how well Sviantek has gotten over the years just becoming a great defender, and you have to think her successes at the French Open. She's carried her play from the clay courts everywhere else, and she defended beautifully there, then got back into the rally and hit a terrific forehand winner. Kennan with shoulders slumped a bit after that point. She thought she had it won on a couple of occasions. Hit those two aces to get to 40-15. Now it's deuce, and she misses the first serve at deuce. Tech doesn't really step in towards the baseline for the second serve, which is up the tee, and it misses, and all of a sudden slipped away here from Kennan from 40-15, now faces a break point. That was a beauty of a shot from Sviantek, as Ghosty says. I, I just like saying Ghosty. Here's Kennan serving again into the net. A 
Second serve coming from Kennan. Break point down at 2-3 in the first set. And a second serve. She tried to kick it in, and she missed by a pretty large margin and falls apart at the end of that game. She had 40-15, but Sviantek has claimed the break back, and it's three games all in this opening set. So back on serve. And that was a disappointing way to give away that game if you're Sophia Kennan. That might be a two- or three-minute stretch that Kennan lives to regret by the end of the day. She's played better than Kennan, uh, played better than Sviantek, rather, in the first five games, and then just that small break of focus there. Sviantek serving now at three all, and it's off the let court and out. Second serve here in the near court. Sviantek toss up, serve down, puts it in to the forehand of Kennan. Sviantek puts a forehand right up the middle, cross court the backhand from Kennan. That Sviantek gets back. Oh, and then Kennan releases that backhand and strikes a winner. Cross court into the deuce court corner. It's love 15. Talk about the power. The racket head speed that both of these players possess. If I say club head speed, I apologize if I lapse into golf all of a sudden. Serve to the backhand of Ken and that return chipped long, and it's 15 all. Can't let Ega back in like this. <laughs> That's exactly right. Absolutely right about that. She's too good to just give away games the way Kennan just did. Three all, 15 all. First set, and Sviantek serves out wide, scooped on back by Kennan, deep, too deep, it's long, and it's 30-15. Rude now 5-1 up on... Ramos Vinolas and Futsevich did consolidate his opening game break. Two love up on Dimitrov as here's Fiontek serving. Big forehand reply from Kennan was up the line and perfectly hit. And that's a winner on the return from Kennan. Fiontek barely moved. And a return winner from Kennan brings us to 30 all in this seventh game of. The opening set as she smacked that back into the deuce court corner. 30 all. Sviantek serves up the tee. Kennan's return is short. Sviantek lets it bounce, steps in to an off forehand, which she left very little room for error on, but just sneaks it in. And it's 40 30. Shuffled the feet, stepped up to it confidently, and then. Hit a line clipper. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Very little room for error there. Game point, 40-30. Sviantek serves into the net. Looking to put her nose back out in front after trailing early. Second serve at 40-30 is into the backhand of Kennan. Slice back by Sviantek. Kennan goes cross-court of forehand. Sviantek returns that back straight up the middle. Now switches to the backhand. Cross-court the forehand is long from Kennan. And Sviantek holds and takes a 4-3 lead at the half-hour mark of this first-round match on Rod Laver Arena. So... Sviantek fighting back after falling behind early. She has clawed her way back to a 4-3 lead in this opening set. Let's see, matches that have already completed on day three. Sloan Stevens, only two matches it's already completed. Sloan Stevens going through, beating Australian wildcard Olivia Gadecki, 6-3 and 6-1 in under an hour. And Elisabetta Cocceretto has moved on into the second round. 6-1 and 7-5 beat Lulu Sun. 
in just 72 minutes out on court six. And those are the only two matches that have uh, been completed. It's a good win for Cochetto and for Sloan Stevens, of course, an American that has made deep runs in the Australian Open before, right just outside the top 40. She moves on with that victory and spends less than an hour on court. Change of ends, and Kennan set to serve here 3-4 with new balls. And here is Kennan, the 2020 champion, serving to the backhand of Sviantek. Backhand by Kennan, straight up the middle. Sviantek returns to the backhand, now goes cross-court with the forehand. Kennan's forehand is deep. It's too deep, and it's love 15 off the forehand error from Sophia Kennan. We were talking earlier Two just before the match started. The winner of this match, whoever it turns out to be, does not have an easy second round match either way. It's either going to be Danielle Collins or Angie Kerber. What a... <laughs> Talk about four terrific players in this small quadrant of the draw. The top of it here on the women's side. Love 15 serve from Kennan. Puts it up the tee. Sviantek's return floats long. It's 15 all. Kennan really love to get some more free points on serve like that. Then just below that area of the draw, uh, Marie Buskova, the number 31 seed, she has gone down already to Linda Noskova as Kennan serves and misses out wide. Got Alina Svitolina in that section of the draw. Already through into the second round. So is Siniakova Kudermetova, the last to beat Sviantek. She's already out as Sviantek hits a good backhand return here. And Kennan, unable to dig it out, puts that forehand into the net and it's 15-30. So already a couple of seeded players in that section of the draw just below Sviantek already out in Buskova and Kudermetova. 15-30 serve, Kennan out wide, dug back by Sviantek long, and it's 30-all. Again, two free points on serves. Thirty all here. Kennan bouncing around on the baseline. Now starts to dribble the ball and look straight ahead. Toss up, serve down, up the tee, and it misses. <laughs> Terry said that's Kennan's three games for the set. <laughs> Serves here to the backhand of Sviantek. Good return. Forehand right up the middle to the backhand of Sviantek. Kennan with a backhand. Cross court goes Sviantek. Steered back by Kennan. Slinging that backhand is Sviantek with great veracity. Forehand up the middle from Kennan. Now an off backhand by Sviantek. Cross court goes Kennan. Sviantek changes direction but misses long as she tried to pull the string on the forehand, and it's 40-30 to Kennan. Only 20% said that Kennan would win a set. Only 10% said she was winning the match. And only 23% said she was winning 6-10 to 10 games. Well, it was a positive start, but Sviantek has come back strong. Kennan has a game point here for 4-all. Toss up, serve down, up the tee, misses long. Second serve coming here for Sophia Kennan. High ball toss. Second serve is in to the backhand of Sviantek. Good deep return. Looped forehand by Sviantek up the middle to the forehand of Kennan. Now up the line goes Sviantek with the backhand, and Kennan misfires long. On the forehand wing, and it's deuce. Another lengthy game here. We might have a lot of these going forward, too. Kennan trying to stay on serve. Crucial eighth game of this opening set. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek's return is chipped back, but long. 
And there's another free point on serve for Sophia Kennan and has another game point here. Kennan not using a lot of the serve clock. Starts the motion with 10 on the clock and serves out wide. Fiontech's return floats to the baseline just in. Now hits a big backhand that Kennan defends back. Fiontech steps up, hits another big backhand. Kennan defends it back at the net. Fiontech volleys it away for a winner. And it's Deuce again. She is relentless on that backhand side. Big cross-court backhand, then up the line, and then to the net to hit the winning volley. Kennan serves Deuce again, and a let on the first serve. Serves once again at Deuce, and this time misses... Long, and it'll be second serve coming. Kennan again starts the motion. Serve is down, up the tee. Fiontech's return is long. Kennan keeps fighting back here. Advantage to the American. Casper Rood has wrapped up the first set on MCA 6-1 on Ramos Vanolas. He's already up a break. In the second set here as well is Casper Rude as we enter the seventh minute of this game. Eighth game, first set. Kennan serves. It's another let. Futsovic still up a break on Dimitrov. 3-2 over on John Kane Arena. Kasatkina starting to pull away from Stearns in that decisive set. Serve up the tee, Kennan. Good return by Sviantek. Off forehand, Kennan. Sviantek loads up and rips a backhand cross court for a winner. And it's Deuce again. She just hits it so clean. And Kennan, nothing she could do about that. That forehand that Kennan hit was directed well, but it hung in the air a little bit longer than she wanted it to, and it gave Sviantek plenty of time to pull out what she wanted to do. Now a great return here by Sviantek. High-floated ball by Kennan. Sviantek an overhead. It's not put away. Kennan's back into the rally. Cross-court forehand. Big forehand Sviantek. Scooped on back defensively by Kennan. Squash shot by Sviantek. Cross-court the backhand from Kennan. Now goes another cross-court backhand. Defended back by Sviantek. Bunted back by Kennan. Brings Sviantek to the net, and she hits the winner on the run. And that's the best rally so far of the match. 16 Ball rally, and Sviantek has a break point. And that has to be demoralizing for Kennan. She was out of that point, got back into it, took control of the point. Sviantek makes her pay in the end, and now... A chance to claim her first real lead of this first set. Sviantek serve is out wide, though, by Kennan, and it's good. And the return misses from Sviantek as we now go into the ninth minute of this game, which continues on at Deuce again. Great point, says Ghosty. It is a great start to the match. It's living up to what we were hoping that it would be with these two big names. Fourth deuce of this game. Kennan up the tee, serves. Sviantek gets it back. It's a drop shot pulled by Kennan. Sviantek tries to get to it. She does, but then spikes it long as she was able to get to it. Just couldn't steer it in play. Kennan another chance to finally hold serve here. And these, this is one of these games. Whoever does finally put an end to this game is going to have a big swing of momentum go their way. Advantage Kennan trying to get to four all. Serve out wide by Kennan is long. Not helping herself, not getting a lot of these first serves in. 
Second serve out wide is in. Blocked back by Shviante. Oh, the backhand winner from Kennan. And it is for all. Near 10-minute long game, and Kennan comes out on top in that battle. It was a ripped return by Shviantek, but right into the swing zone of Kennan, and she hits a backhand winner into the deuce court. And it's four games all in the first set. That's about as intense of a game as you'll get so early in a match. For all. And no change of ends either here as Sviantek now has to pick herself up and serve here. This might be where Kennan could see an opening, get a break, and then have a chance to serve for the set. If Sviantek still thinking about missed chances in that last game, and maybe she is because she just missed that ball toss, and that's the first time she's had to regather a ball toss in this set. And then her first serve... Oh, my goodness, misses by a mile. Second serve coming. Sneaking in towards the baseline, Kennan. Again, a missed ball toss by Shviantet. She might be a little perturbed at all the chances she had in that last game. Here's the second serve. It's into the backhand of Kennan. Good deep return, and the backhand is into the net from Shviantek. And I, I get the feeling Kennan... If Kennan's seeing the same thing that I'm seeing, I think she envisions an opportunity to take advantage of a little lack of focus here from the world's number one player. Love 15. Shviantek serves up the tee. Kennan makes the return. Forehand is mishit terribly by Shviantek, and now it's Love 30. Two points away here from a major break of serve is Sophia Kennan. Love 30. Shviantek grits the teeth a little bit. Ball tosses up a bit higher than her last few, and the serve is into the net. She has that very low ball toss, so when it gets away from her, does struggle to recover if she throws it up higher than she needs. Here's the second serve. It's in to the backhand of Kennan. Ripped backhand. Cross court. Sviantek hits a winner there. See if that gets her back on course. Sean Power in the comments. Who saw this coming? With a little devilish grin emoji. Is that what we call that emoji? It's the devilish grin emoji. If it's not what we call it, that's what I call it now. Try to copyright it. 15.30 serve out wide. Terrific serve. Great return by Kennan. Now she's into the rally. Off forehand, though, by Shviantek ends the rally just as quickly as Kennan got into it. It's 30 all. We are dead, dead even right here. 4-all, 30-all in a very high-quality first set on Rod Laver Arena, 45 minutes in. That was the 14th winner from Sviantek, who serves here at 30-all, kicks it in up the tee. Kennan makes the return, cross-court the backhand, Sviantek, loop back by Kennan. Oh, and a missed overhead by Sviantek. Puts it straight into the net, took it out of the air. And Kennan has the break point. So here is Kennan's chance to reclaim the lead that she had early in this first set and be right on the cusp of taking the set. Break point for 5 4. Sviantek serves into the net. Kennan will have a chance to attack a second serve right here. She sways back and forth on the baseline. Left foot on the baseline, right foot just inches back of it. Here's Sviantek, second serve, it's in. Backhand return from Kennan, cross court the backhand, Sviantek. Up the line, Kennan hits a winner, and she claims the break right back. Big fist pump as she goes to her chair, and Sophia Kennan is up a break five games to four in this opening set. And you just had a feeling. 
Sviantek was thinking about those missed opportunities that she did not claim. She had a chance to go 5-3 up. All those missed opportunities went away. Kennan made it 4-all, and then all of a sudden, the wheels were starting to turn for Kennan as she looked across the net and saw an opportunity that she takes. And Sophia Kennan is up five games to four and will serve for this opening set. And uh, it would seem as if a lot of people in the comments section here are quite shocked, and rightfully so. Uh, Kennan, obviously a very quality player. Don't know if anyone thought she had a real chance to compete in this match the way she has toe-to-toe -to -toe here. There's Now there's an interesting one that you see on your screen. Sviantek has lost five of her previous eight matches at a slam against former slam champions. Facing one here, of course, that might be telling to what we're about to see. We'll see if she can fight back here and stay in the set. Yeah, that up the line backhand. Chef's kiss. 5-4, Kennan serving for this opening set. See if she can hold her nerve and hold her serve here to put an end to this opening set. Missed the first serve. Here comes the second. Tosses up, serve is down to the backhand of Sviantek. Backhand straight up the middle, Kennan to the backhand of Sviantek. Two-hander from Kennan. Now up the line goes Sviantek and Kennan unable to get that back. Swatting it flies as Sviantek hits that winner up the line. Terry believes that Sviantek will break back. See if she does. Kennan in the far court, love 15. Serves out wide. Sviantek blocks the return back. Up the line, it's guided by Kennan. Short ball back, Sviantek. Cross court the backhand, Kennan. Sviantek back into the point. Forehand up the middle. Off forehand, Sviantek. That's a winner. Positive start here for Sviantek as she looks to stay in this set. It's love 30. Ghosty says the problem for Kennan is Iga has better fitness. Well, there's not many on the women's tour that is more fit than Sviantek. That's for sure. Love 30. Kennan serves out wide. It's a let on the serve. Sviantek two points away from breaking right back here. Serve here into the net for uh, Kennan. Second serve coming. Again, Sviantek really doesn't change her return position from first to second serve. Here is the second serve. It's into the backhand of Sviantek. Kennan goes cross court, but long. And it's three break points here for Sviantek to try to get right back on serve. Boy, this feels like it would be really demoralizing to Kennan to have a chance to take the first set. And be broken at love. Serves up the tee and misses. Fifty minute first set, and it might go even further. Second serve, Kennan. It's in. Oh, Sviantek attacking that second serve misses. So the backhand lands wide by quite a margin. Still two chances to break right back here. 15-40. Kennan serves into the net again. There's a comment that I want to <laughs> mention in just a moment. Kennan serves to the backhand of Sviantek. Backhand from Kennan. Up the middle. It was just in. Now she pulls out a drop shot, and it's into the net, and Sviantek does break right back. And it's 5-all. Just like that, gets back on serve, putting that poor game behind her. Comes right back. Did, am I reading this right from Jake here? Seth Whelan making a dog's dinner 
out of this third set. I don't know what making a dog's dinner out of something means. <laughs> Pardon the ignorance on that, but I don't... <laughs> I'm always here for a turn of phrase, but I, I need to learn what that one means. Here's Sviantek serving at 5-all. This first set goes further still. Let on the first serve. Where's Kennan's mind now after that very poor service game with a chance to wrap up the set? Sviantek big serve, blocked back by Kennan deep, backhand by Sviantek, loop to the baseline. Oh my goodness, and then she just ropes a backhand winner cross court. Sviantek with her 11th backhand winner of this opening set, and that one was the best of all of them, You'd, <laughs> at least I think. Absolutely cracked. 15 love. Serves here. Good flat serve. Kennan's return into the net. 30 love. Okay, we have we have Jake has responded. It's basically like say, saying making a meal, making harder work of the set than he should be. Okay, well, I like that. Now that I know what it is, I like that. Who knows? I may use it at some point. I will cite you. I, I will not plagiarize it from you. 30 love serves. Fiontech up the tee. Kennan makes the return. Backhand up the middle. Fiontech an adjustment in the backhand hit by Kennan. Now steps into a big backhand, and it goes wide as she was trying to end the point right there, and she did, but not for the better of her. It's 40 love. Yeah, you're right. Iga is slowing down the pace here, and she's she's so mentally strong. She's learned that over the years for sure. Big serve out wide. Short ball back, Kennan. Backhand stepped into and hit for a winner by Sviantek into the deuce court. She holds it love there and puts her nose back in front, 6-5, deep into this first set, and now Kennan will have the pressure squarely put back on her racket as she'll try to serve to stay in the set. As Sviantek has come right back after falling 4-5 down in the set. Let's come back to take a couple of quick games in a row. And now she's a game away from the set. Let's see what else is going on here. Casper uh, Rude. Uh, it was one-way traffic, the match with... Ramos Vanolas last time I checked on it still is. Still up a set and a break. 2 1 in the second. Futsevich 5 2 now up on Dimitrov. So Futsevich might be on his way to the first set. Nori's taking the second set and up a break in the third. Safwilan and Greek Spore in a third set tie break with Safwilan up two sets to love, but Greek Spore. It's up 5-3 in the tie break. Trevisan is forced a third set and is up a break in the third on the young Mexican. As Sophia Kennan comes back out onto the court, serving to stay in this first set at 5-6, as you see all the scores pop up on your screens at home as... Here's Kennan serving up the tee. Big return by Sviantek. Forehand straight up the middle by Kennan. Loop back by Sviantek. Forehand of Kennan is long, and it's love 15. See that Lajevic match as well. He's down two sets to one. Laszlo Gera is in a dogfight there. A set apiece on court 17. Love 15, Kennan in danger of losing this first set after serving forward at 5-4. Good serve out wide, blocked back by Sviantek. Good backhand cross court is a winner from Kennan. It's 15 love. 15 all, beg your pardon. What has been a very evenly matched and evenly played first set. 
It's 15 all right here for Kennan, who serves. Goes too long. Second serve coming for Kennan in the near court. In the sunshine, toss and serve to the backhand. Oh, of Sviantek, who ripped it off the let cord, and it drops back on Kennan's side of the net. Sviantek throws up an apologetic hand, and it's 15-30, and that's just unfortunate for Kennan. Not sure she would have had a play on it had it gotten to her and not hit the let cord. And she misses the first serve here. A uh, bit of good luck there for Sviantek, as if she needs any good luck her way. Second serve, Kennan at 15-30 out wide. Sviantek makes the return deep off backhand from Kennan, looped back and wide from Sviantek, and it's 30-all. We have Marcus screaming in the comment section, Come on, Sophia. Thirty all. Very important points here. As Kennan tries to force a first set tiebreak, misses the first serve. Comes the second serve from Kennan, puts that one in. Big backhand from Shviantek. Backhand up the middle from Kennan was nice and deep, but it misses long by just a fraction, and Shviantek. Arrives at the first set point here in this opening frame. What a roller coaster ride of a set this has been. And Sviantek a point away from putting it to bed after nearly an hour. Kennan serves up the tee. Sviantek return is short. Big backhand from Kennan, and she puts it away in the ad court corner, and keeps the set going at deuce. Kennan just keeps fighting back. It's it, It's been a very interesting set. Both players have faced adversity in this set, and they've responded well to it. Kennan at deuce, serves out wide. Sviantek makes the return, then hits a deep backhand of the backhand of Kennan. Up the middle goes Sviantek. Two-headed backhand from Kennan is good. Sviantek misses on the backhand wing, and now Kennan with a game point to force a tie break here. Like I said, it has been a roller coaster set. Tie break would be fitting way to end it as we strike one hour into this first set. Game point for six all. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek makes an acrobatic return. Backhand from Kennan. Loop back by Sviantek, and it was long. And Kennan has fought back, saving a set point. Holds for six all, and we're going to a tie break here in this first set on Rod Laver Arena. So the number one player in the world being pushed to a first set tie break by the former Australian Open champion, Sophia Kennan, in this match that we have been waiting for since the draw was announced has lived up to expectation. And it will be Sviantek to serve first in the tie break. And here she goes. In the far court, Iga. Toss up, serve down. Great serve. Kennan makes the return. Cross court, the backhand from Sviantek, and she gets more let cord luck as it goes off the let cord. It dies over on Kennan's side, and Kennan a bit frustrated by that. Second time in, what, the last five minutes or so that Sviantek's had a let cord winner. One zero to Sviantek to start this first set tiebreak. If Kennan can win this tiebreak, we might be in for a three, three and a half hour battle here. Could be. 
Kennan serves. First time in the breaker. Up the tee. Sviantek makes the return. Line drive forehand by Kennan. Loop back by Sviantek. Deep. Big looping shot by Kennan. Sviantek to the net. Kennan hits a lob. It drops on the line. Sviantek backpedals. A backpedals. Did a backhand. And then cross court and missing is Kennan. And the early mini break belongs to Sviantek. Boy, she was in, then she was back to the baseline in that rally, that lob that just hit the line from Kennan. My goodness. Did just clip the line, that lob, too, as Kennan serves. Sviantek makes the return. Now it's a backhand up the middle. Kennan a looping cross-court forehand. Big shot by Sviantek. Cross-court goes Kennan. Sviantek then tries to go to the back door, but misses wide on the forehand side. And Kennan able to get on the board in the tie break. Sviantek with a mini break will serve it 2-1. Feels like that every step of the way in this set, we've been waiting for Sviantek to take control. Hasn't been able to. Kennan has put up great resistance. See if she can do it here, Iga. 2-1 in this first set tiebreak. Sviantek serves into the backhand of Kennan. Makes the return up the line. Sviantek blasting away with a backhand winner, and it's 3-1. It was a really good serve. Kennan did well to make the return the way she did, but right into the sweet spot for Sviantek, straight as an arrow up the line on the backhand. 3-1 Sviantek in the break. Serving at the far end. Short toss up, has to regather it. And now serves into the net. Very tense moments here. Second serve. Sviantek able to strike it in. And the return by Kennan up the line was good. And Sviantek couldn't get back to it. And Kennan claims the mini break back. Back and forth we start to go again. It's 2-3. Hmm. So Kennan gets back on serve in this tie break. And you just never know how many twists and turns we still have here. And what has been a very enthralling first set. Here's Kennan serving out wide. Sviantek makes the return deep. Backhand by Kennan to the backhand of Sviantek up the middle. Deep backhand by Kennan. Short ball back. Sviantek. Oh, Kennan hits the net on the forehand. Ugh. They'll change ends with Sviantek up 4-2. She had just gotten a short ball back by Sviantek and stepped into that forehand and just didn't follow through on it. So they'll change ends here with Sviantek 4-2 up. <laughs> More twists and turns and a twisty turn. <laughs> that feels like something Murray Walker would have said. Great Formula One commentator. <laughs> Kennan serving at 2-4 after the change of sides. Have to remember that when we get back into racing this season. That'll be fun. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek makes the return. Forehand up the middle from Kennan. Sviantek directs it on the backhand. Throwing up a lob is Kennan. Sviantek, a good deep backhand. Kennan cross court the backhand. Up the line goes Sviantek. Defending forehand by Kennan. Oh, the forehand up the line is great from Sviantek. Kennan defends it on the backhand, but short of the net, and it's 5 2.
Now I think control has been fully taken, and Kennen swipes the rocket into the hard court below her. Frustration's gathering here. Two points away from this set is Fiontek trying to finish it here. Talked about Sloane Stevens earlier today finishing her match in less than an hour. This first set has gone 67 minutes. Sviantek serves at 5-2 and goes too long on the first serve. Here comes the second serve from Sviantek. Tosses up, serve is down, body serve. Kennan blisters the return into the net, and it's four set points coming up for Iga Sviantek at 6-2. In this first set tiebreak, number one player in the world has had to fight tooth and nail in this first set for chances to end it here. From the near end, toss up, serve down, and missed it long. See if Kennan will attack the second serve. Might as well here. Have to save four set points. Second serve is in. Kennan whacks the return. Sviantek somehow digs it off of the top of her shoelaces, and we're into a rally. Up the middle, the forehand by Sviantek, and missing the forehand. Cross court and wide is Kennan, and Sviantek takes the opening set in a tie break, seven points to two. 68 minutes set, a marathon, and Sviantek takes it from Kennan by the skin of her teeth. Very entertaining opening set. Great start to this one. We'll see if Kennan can fire back at the world's number one player or if Sviantek can get to the finish line. We'll take a break and be back for the second set. I cut Matthew off there. I do apologize. I can see you backstage, Matthew. I thought I'd just give my um, minute or two's thoughts on that first set and maybe even address one or two of the comments in the live chat. And by the way, the ups and downs and the twists and turns that were so uh, well described by Matthew um, kind of took me by surprise. Um, uh, when I turned, when I left, I think about one all, I think it was, or very near the beginning, bon serve, and then to see Kennan up a break, and then once Fiontech broke back, I thought, well, that's that. And off Eager's going to power on. But no, Kennan wrestled back control of the match, served for the set at 5-4, but soon went Love 40 down. And um, the fear was at that time that she'd had a couple of bites at the cherry and that Eager was going to make her pay. Uh, it looked like, of course, that Eager might even make her pay before we got into the tie break. But Kennan may point to that net cord in the tie break. I mean, it did come on the back of one from just a few minutes before that Matthew also uh, mentioned. Uh, the one a few minutes before didn't really have a huge bearing on the outcome of the first set because Kennan ended up holding. But the the swing and momentum that Eager had at the change of ends for two, uh, partly because one of those points was just aided and abetted by that. Uh, net cord meant that, listen, if you're going to be eager, one thing you might need is a bit of luck on your side. But she certainly uh, didn't get it there. Nerlan with a, a wonderful hot take, of course, that we can only get from Nerlan. Uh, wonderful to see you in the chat. Uh, lots of uh, one or two comments as well about Rafa and the Saudi Tennis Federation. I think there's a huge discussion to be had on that, Terry, and, and I'm more than welcome to talk about it, but probably another day. Ghosty, you must be gutted right now as somebody who's, you know, backed Kennan all the way. I remember you saying that she should be in a in a power rankings of 10, but you can be proud of the effort she's made in the first set. And one thing I think we can just hope from for Sophia is that she's not going to go away limply. I mean, it could well be, you know, six and one this in the end, but Kennan is not going to go down without a fight. And I'm, I'm optimistic and hopeful that we can get a equally competitive uh, second set. But um, having said that, it does feel like yeah, Sophia needed that first set. I mean, Matthew was saying as well that who knows, uh, Sophia wins that first set and we could be in for a three-hour epic. But I think at the back of his mind, and I hope I'm not uh, misinterpreting his words, 
that was kind of based on with the asterisk of Sofia winning that first set. But we'll see. Uh, Sofia has surprised us all before, and maybe she'll surprise us again uh, in the coming hour or two. But um, Iga certainly being pushed a bit more than maybe she would have liked. But I also think um, that, you know, if you're going to play Iga, maybe first round is, is the best occasion. I even think the same of, of Novak and Rafa, that they are a little bit more vulnerable, which is why we we look back on some of their slam runs and go, oh, they only dropped one set the whole tournament, and it was in the first round or the second round. I mean, Les Logier was the only person to take sets off Novak in New York, um, uh, for example, in an early round. Ghosty there saying how gutted he is. Jake talking about Safi Uli, and actually I should have a quick look around. I see Trevi San is 2-1 up on the Mexican Zarazua, uh, where they are one set a piece. Uh, I should have a quick look see who's serving there. So Trevor San is serving, so she is up a break. Uh, what is going on on the men's side of the draw? Let's have a quick look. Safiulin getting some mentions. So Greek Spore has got to serve back, and it's up a break in the fourth. So that one could be heading to a five set epic. Cam Noy dispensing of the Peruvian Varias quite comfortably, 4-4-2. Four, four, Les Loger fought back to get it to one set all, only for the Frenchman Kazu to take a two sets to one lead. Lahetska is safely through as well. He loves it in Australia, of course, the quarterfinalist from last year. Uh, Lajovic and Zeppari are getting towards the business end. In fact, they are definitely at the business end of the fourth set uh, with the Italian uh, two sets to one up on his opponent. Um, Feast is now two sets to one up against uh, Vesely. So he's fought back from a set down as well. And now surely in the driving seat to book a spot in the second round. Okay, if Matthew is ready, I shall wheel him back in. Give me a thumbs up, Matthew, if you are ready. I thought you'd give me a thumb up. Indeed, you did. And what a poet uh, Matthew is, by the way. Uh, some little gems in that first set. Uh, and I'm going to go backstage while he talks you through the uh, the remainder of this second set, at least. And Matthew, if you do need a break at any point, I'm seconds away from my laptop and can press buttons and jump in and give my thoughts anyway. Well, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you for the kind words on top of that. Uh, just to recap that first set, uh, if you've been hopping in and out, or you're just joining us, 21 winners for Sviantek to Kennan's 12. 20 unforced errors for Kennan Sviantek with 11 unforced. Uh, really, that's probably the biggest margin in the statistical world of that first set. Uh, also, second serve points won. Sviantek won 60% on their second serve to Kennan's 32. Everything else was pretty even. Uh, Kennan actually two for two on break point. Sviantek was two for five, got a bit frustrated. Uh, what was it? That was the the three four game or four three game, whatever it was, uh, that Sviantek had a chance to go up five three. It was about a 10 minute long game. Kennan held for four all. That kind of got uh, Sviantek a little frustrated, but she responded well as uh, she's just come out as Sviantek after, uh, I would think, a change of clothes. After that 68-minute first set, uh, that was extremely exciting to watch. Hopefully it, uh, you guys enjoyed it as much as I did over here, and hopefully you are enjoying the coverage. If so, of course, as always, like and subscribe and comment. Hopefully I got all of that down. I'll, I'll <laughs> uh, any way I can help, I'll, I'll try to help. As both players now back on the court, Kennan will serve to start this second set. And it has to be. A difficult uphill battle for Kennan as she makes that first serve. Sviantek gets the return in. Now Kennan goes up the line on the forehand. Big backhand. Sviantek up the middle goes Kennan. Loop back by Sviantek on a short ball that Kennan takes advantage of. Muscles a backhand into the deuce court corner. And Sviantek whips it into the net. 15 love. Uh, Ghosty saying, Matthew John is always surprised when an American can speak English. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I, I might hold my comments on that. I might say something that I shouldn't. <laughs> Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek makes the return, and there's a backhand winner from Sviantek. Good one-two punch. Believe me, there's plenty, plenty of Americans that don't speak the language well. No doubt. <laughs> 30 love. Kennan serves out wide. Forehand reply by Sviantek. Kennan into the net on the forehand. Thirty fifteen here. As we are just underway in this second set. Hope you're enjoying the commentary. Second time on for me here, which I uh, greatly appreciate being invited back as Kennan serves up the tee. Sviantek makes the return. Forehand up the middle from Kennan. Loop back by Sviantek to the forehand of Kennan. Big backhand into the net from Sviantek. And it's 40-15. Speaking of commentary, I, I don't know how many people watching here are watching in America ESPN's coverage. Speak to that in just a moment. Kennan serves up the tee at 40-15. Sviantek makes the return. Back in up the middle from Kennan. Looped back. High archer from Sviantek lands long. And Kennan holds to start the second set. Um, if there are any people here in America that uh, are watching right now, do comment because I heard... And I did not know this going in, but I heard there was a match yesterday on ESPN that was called by one of the McEnroe brothers. I can't remember which, whether it was John or Patrick, and Nick Kyrgios. And I did not know this going in, or I would have made that appointment television <laughs> to listen to hear, hear what Nick sounds like on the mic on commentary, uh, but I did not. So if anyone here was able to hear that, and I don't even know what match it was. I do apologize. But if anyone here was able to hear that, I see Ghosty. He's watching on ESPN. Uh, do a report back. I, I want to know how that sounded uh, with Kyrgios doing. And, and I, was it John or Patrick McEnroe? See, I should have done better. <laughs> should have done better investigating before I mentioned it. it is after the change of end, Sviantek serves into the net. Okay, it was so it was John McEnroe. Oh, good Lord. John McEnroe and Nick Kyrgios. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine the words per minute there. Had a great return there by Kennan. It's a backhand return winner up the line, and it's Love 15. Oh, it was Sitsipas who they called. Okay, very good. Miles David coming up big in the comment section there. See, if I would have known that going forward, like I said, I would have made that appointment viewing in this household and uh, would have at least recorded it at the very least. Love 15. Sviantek serves up the tee, and that's an ace. That's her first of the match. As she hits that one right up the tee, 15 all. Kyrgios likes John. I, I wonder why. <laughs> it's not like they are at all alike in their tennis careers. <laughs> 15 all, Sviantek serves out wide, and she goes with back-to-back -back aces. Kennan had two aces in the first set, and they were actually back-to-back, -back, and now Sviantek hits the first two aces of the match for her, and they are on back-to-back -back points, and it's 30-15. Uh, let's see, James saying I can't find the match live on ESPN. There might be a reason for that. Hold on. Stand by as Sviantek serves to the forehand of Kennan. Big up the middle forehand from Sviantek. Kennan gets it back competitively, and Sviantek misses, makes a forehand error, and it's 30 all. Yeah, everything is on ESPN Plus in the early hours of the day in Australia. Then it's on either ESPN or ESPN2, like starting at midnight or something. It's a I would say who knows why they went to that, but we all know why they went to that. It was for people to pay for ESPN+. Plus. Kennan makes the return. Good forehand from Sviantek. Now changes direction with the backhand, and Kennan with a big forehand puts Sviantek on the run. Cross court goes Kennan. Sviantek tries to defend it back, but it loops long, and Kennan's going to have a break point here. 
in the second game of the second set and a chance for Kennan to get an early lead in this middle set. Well, I think most people would have put their money on after the way that first set ended that Sviantek would come out flying in the second and she would be the one with the early break, but Kennan held to start the set now as a break point. Here's Sviantek serving. Backhand reply from Kennan. Slice back to the forehand of Sviantek, and she just rips it up the line for a winner, saves a break point, and it's deuce. <laughs> That's right. Hit the subscribe button. We, we do say hit the subscribe button and you'll see the number tick forward, which is a great, it, it, it's very nice to see the number move up a tick. It's very satisfying to watch. Here's Sviantek serving at deuce into the forehand of Kennan, short ball back, backhand up the middle, Sviantek, cross court goes Kennan, and it's just wide. So Sviantek saving a break point now has a game point here. Let's see, James saying that he thinks Kennan is going to win it by winning the second set 7-5 and the third set in a tiebreak. That's a bold prediction. Maybe it'll come true. Watch and see. Big return here by Kennan on a good Sviantek serve, and Sviantek lollipops the forehand wide, and it's back to Deuce again. James, a big Kennan fan. Deuce again in this opening service game of the second set for Iga Sviantek. Here is Iga serving into the net. She's a long way off the hash mark, too, well to the right of the service mark. She wants to put some angle and spin on this second serve. She does up the tee to the backhand of Canada, and it skids long. Does the return, and it's advantage Sviantek again. Comment down there about the Dimitrov and uh, the Dimitrov match and Futsevich. Have to check in on that after the game comes to a close here. Advantage Sviantek again. After taking the first set, as you see on your screen, 7-2 in a first set tie break. Serves here to the backhand of Kennan. Oh, what a return. Whoa. Blasted it cross court at an almighty angle, and it drops in, and it's a return winner from Kennan somehow, and it's deuce again. Boy, she might not hit another return quite like that <laughs> all year long. Deuce, Sviantek serves, big forehand return from Kennan. Sviantek gets it back, off forehand from Kennan, and it's long again. We had some comments, I think it was from Ghosty in that first set. All these shots missing long from Kennan, and that one does too, and it looked like she was in control of that rally. That's a missed opportunity there. Advantage, Sviantek again. Yeah, there's the comment, long again. <laughs> Speaking of long, long game here. Up the tee goes the serve. Kennan makes the return. The backhand by Sviantek. Kennan throws up a high-hanging ball, and Sviantek takes it out of the air and misses. Oh, boy. Now six and a half minutes into this game, and that one was not a shot that Sviantek will want to remember. It's the second time she's taken one out of the air and missed. She put it into the bottom of the net, when she did that in the first set, and that one misses wide, try to do it with the backhand. Back to Deuce into the eighth minute of this game. Sviantek serves out wide. Kennan whacks the return off the let cord, lands over on Sviantek's side, but Sviantek, like a cat, gets to it and throws it cross court for a winner, and it's again advantage Sviantek. So Kennan. Can't get the luck that Sviantek has been getting with the let cord. Yeah, it is a pattern. You're, you're absolutely right. It is a pattern that 
She's hitting so many of these shots long. Another chance for Sviante to wrap up this game. Didn't think we would have such marathon games to start the set. Good serve up the tee. Kennan can't get it back. So finally, Sviantek does hold. And it's a game all in the second set. But I would think, if you're a Sophia Kennan fan, as that is officially a 7-minute, 38-second long game, if you're a Kennan fan, which we have some in the chat section here, that's got to be a very promising sign after the way that first set ended. You thought maybe she comes out flat or maybe Sviantek comes out roaring to start the second set. That's a very positive start to the set for Kennan, and she's going to keep grinding away in this match. As you see pop up on your screen, it was Futsevich who took that first set from Dimitrov, and he's up a break in the second set, Futsevich, as here's Kennan serving at the far end up the tee. The return is high, hanging and short of the net from Sviantek. Mentioned, too, mentioned it way, way earlier in the match, but Kennan just missed out on being a seed. Ranking has climbed back up to 41. Serves up the tee. Sviantek whacks the return back. Backhand by Kennan. Now she waits and sends one up the line. That Sviantek defends back, and then Kennan steps into a forehand and puts it away in the ad court corner for a winner, and it's 30 love for Kennan. But she's gotten that ranking back up to 41. So if she could win this match, and then who knows? I mean, if she wins this match, she could go on a deep run here. She's obviously very equipped to go on a deep run at any slam, especially here in Melbourne. Serve out wide. Somehow, Sviantek made the return, but it was right into the sweet spot of Kennan as she just nonchalantly swings a forehand winner into the open court, and it's 40 love. And looking to hold easily here after Sviantek had to work seven and a half minutes to hold serve. Here's Kennan at 40 love missing the first serve. Here comes her second serve at 40 love up the tee and into the net goes the return from Sviantek. That's a hold at love for Kennan and is 2-1 up in this second set. Uh, but just to finish that point, Kennan lost in the first round here last year, so if she can win this match, and then if she was able to win a couple more and go on a run, pick up a lot of ranking points, and then, of course, maybe she gets one of those seeds when we get to Roland Garros here in four months' time. So, uh, who knows? Uh, but again, it's it's players of quality like this that have dealt with, you know, whatever, time away with injury or whatever it might be. They've dropped so far into the rankings. They're not getting seeds in these Grand Slams. And they're creating matchups like this in early rounds of Slams. It's very entertaining for us. I don't know how much Iga Sviantek likes having to play Sophia Kennan in the first round, but it's extremely exciting. For us fans, getting to watch a match like this in the first round. Kennan losing to Victoria Azarenka in the first round here last year in straight sets. And Azarenka, of course, used that victory to propel her into a run all the way into the semifinals here last year where she lost to Rabakina in the semis. So, that, yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously this win would mean a lot in a lot of different ways for Kennan if she can do it, but pretty good mountain to climb here. Has to come from a set down against the world's number one player. Sviantek serves 1-2 into the net. Second serve here from Sviantek is in to the forehand of Kennan, which loops back long. 
Casper uh, Ruud has taken the second set from Ramos Vinolos. They're just underway in the third. Mentioned Futsevich up a set on Dimitrov. Daniel Collins and Angie Kerber just underway over on 1573 Arena. And that uh, it's the winner of this match that plays the winner of that between Collins and Kerber. Sviantek serves. Kenan Miss fires on the return. It's 30 love. So, I mean, let's just say, well, whoever wins this match, they will have beaten a former slam champion in the first round, and they could very well play another slam champion in the second round, and Angie Kerber, multi-time slam champion. And Angie Kerber, 30 love serve, coming here from Sviantek. And into the net it goes. Second serve coming here for Iga. Into the backhand of Kennan. Sviantek had to retreat to hit the backhand. And then Kennan just reaches out on that backhand, misses it wide. That was a poor miss from Kennan, and it's 40 love. Uh, Nori, by the way, did wrap up. His match against Varias, as you heard mentioned earlier. Uh, Lahetchka getting through with a victory as well. Serve out wide to the Kennan backhand. Ooh, and an awkward bounce for Sviantek that she could not scoop up, and it's 40 15. Kasatkina did advance over Peyton Stearns in three sets. 40 15 here. Sviantek with points for two all here in the second set on Rod Laver Arena. Sviantek serves out wide. That's an ace, her third of the match, and it wraps up a very quick service game. Very much the opposite of what her first service game was in this second set. Two all. Coming up next on Rod Laver Arena is Holger Runa. Number eight seed taking on Yoshihito Nishioka. And the night session on Rod Laver Arena is Elena Rabakina taking on Karolina Pliskova. There's another one of these, those blockbuster early round matches. Pliskova unseated against Rabakina, the finalist from a year ago, as Kennan serves into the net. And Alcaraz and Gasquet, the second of the night session matches on RLA. Kennan's second serve is into the back end of Sviantek. Pulled up the line. Cross court goes Kennan to the back end of Sviantek. Big sweeping backhand by Kennan. Goes cross court and wide. And it's love 15. The night session on Margaret Court Arena features, uh, features Zverev in the first of the night session matches on Margaret Court. And then uh, Jess Pagula is in action against Rebecca Marino, a Canadian qualifier. All North American battle there in prime time on Margaret Court Arena. Love 15 serve Kennan into the net. A lot of Americans in action. Already Sloan Stevens with the win. Peyton Stearns out. Kennan in action here. We'll have Pagula later, of course. Here's the serve out wide to Sviantek, and the return rocketed long. And it's 15 all. Kennan with her feet firmly into this match. Good serve up the tee. Short ball back by Sviantek, but she gets into the rally. The forehand deep by Kennan. Sviantek gets it back, and then Kennan goes wide. With an inside out forehand. So just right on cue. Kennan now looking at 1530 with already her eighth unforced error of this set. It's only four games old. 1530 serve. Body served to the back end of Sviantek. Shipped back by Kennan. Directed up the middle by Sviantek. Cross court goes Kennan. To the back end of Sviantek. Up the line goes Kennan. Loop back cross court by Sviantek. And Kennan again goes wide with 
an inside out forehand. And now it's two break points for Sviantek to really take control of this one. Forehand starting to let Kennan down a bit. Two break points for Sviantek. Converted on two out of five break points in that first set. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek's return misses. And that's a break point saved by Kennan. One more to go, 30-40. North of an hour and a half in this match. And it certainly seems to be teetering right here. Sviantek already up a set in a hard-fought first frame. Could claim an early break here in the second. Serve up the T is in. Sviantek makes the return. The backhand is long from Kennan. Sviantek gets the opening break of serve in the second set. Now a set and a break in hand for the world's number one player. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back. Sviantek up a set and a break on Sophia Kennan. Thanks for tuning in to this watch along. While there's a break in play, here's a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell. Your support helps to keep the channel going. While we're here, you can now become a member to enjoy perks, including badges for the live chat, but also bonus material, such as interviews with top players from both ATP and WTA tours. The membership link is pinned in the live chat. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So whether it be serves or volleys, forehands or backhands, serve bots or drop shots, we've got you covered. Whether that be via our website, talking-tennis.com, where you can read features and interviews from our top writers. Or if you prefer us in audio form, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Amazon, or Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, we offer you wall-to-wall -wall coverage via our regular watch-alongs, magazine shows such as Nick's WTA Weekly or Damien and Mario's ATP version. Plus, we deliver top content from people on the ground, actually at the tournaments, so you get even nearer to the action. So, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all things Tennis. Sviantek with the break and a 3-2 lead in the second set. Serving to the backhand of Kennan. Backhand up the middle from Sviantek. Machetied on back by Kennan. Looped back deep by Sviantek. And then Kennan rips it cross court on the backhand wing and hits a winner. It's love 15. Really good comment there from Ghosty because I, I was just thinking the same thing a moment ago. Kennan, she's not controlling the top spin that Sviantek is throwing at her. And, you know, Sviantek puts a lot of top spin on her shots. And, and it is when you see Kennan rear back as Sviantek serves to the forehand of Kennan directed inside out and then into the net goes Sviantek. So it's love 30 here. But it does seem Kennan is a bit slow with the racket head speed. At least to me, on the backhand side, it's looked slow on quite a bit of occasions. But with that even said, like I said in that last game, the forehand starting to let her down a little bit more here. But with all of that said, she's got love 30 here. And Sviantek serving out wide. Kennan makes a good return. Sviantek with an awkward shot right up the middle. Short ball back by Kennan. Sviantek powers it right up the middle. Kennan gets it back. Inside out forehand winner from Sviantek into the ad court. Gets her to 15.30. Sviantek just trying to get to the finish line now. It's becoming clearer in her vision, but certainly Kennan not going to go away without a fight here. She's been fighting all match long here. Sophia Kennan, 15-30 serves Sviantek, goes long on the first serve. From the near end is Sviantek, hot pink cap on with a white top. 
Tosses up, served down, out wide. Kennan's backhand return is right up the line. Just in, Sviantek off balance forehand to the Kennan back. And, oh, and Sviantek with a slip as she puts that shot into the net. Kennan's got a couple of break points here. Chance to break right back for Sophia Kennan. Every time it is felt like Sviantek is going to run away with it, that she's finally gotten Kennan where she wants her. And she's putting a strangle hold over the match. Kennan has just come right back. Two break points. Sviantek serves out wide. Kennan all the way out of the court to make the return that's not made. Thought it was just going to skip over the net, but it does not. And one break point saved by Sviantek. It's 30-40. Again, Danielle Collins and Angie Kerber playing as we speak. It's the winner of that match against the winner of this match in the second round. Could be a fireworks kind of match either way. As Sviantek serves up the tee, it's an ace and saves two break points and gets to deuce and Kennan shrugs her shoulders back at her box. As Sviantek has come up with four aces already in this second set after not scoring one in the first. It's Deuce. Sviantek serves out wide. Kennan's return, sharp angled and long. And it's three points on the trot here for Sviantek and has a point here for 4-2. Kennan's going to have to dig deep here. Sviantek. Toss goes up, serve is down and in the net. Second serve coming. Let's see how Kennan tries to attack this. As Sviantek serves, Kennan with a big return, goes too big with it. Backhand is rifled long. Sviantek saves two break points and holds on to consolidate her own break and now goes ahead 4-2 in this second stanza. And Sviantek is in control here. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, leave comments. We openly invite you to comment. We'll uh, talk along with you all throughout the Australian Open, which will be here on this channel for the next two weeks. Great coverage as always here. Hope you'll be with us throughout the tournament and throughout the year. Gust of wind just comes in as Kennan serves 2-4 down in the second set and into the net on that first serve. Here comes her second, a very high ball toss. Serve is down into the backhand of Sviantek. Good deep return, and Kennan unable to scoop it back. It's into the net. Just got a comment. Apparently, Fucevic starting to really make some shots against Dimitrov, that's a tight one. Fucevic is up a set, 2-3 in the second. Up the tee, the serve by Kennan. Sviantek misses the return. Still not come out with a day four schedule yet for tomorrow. Fifteen all. Kennan serves out wide. Sviantek makes the return. Oh, and Kennan puts that forehand right into the center of the net. And it's definitely starting to get away from the 2020 Australian Open champion here as Sviantek tightens her grip. 15-30, first serve misses into the net from Kennan. Serve out wide. Ah, oh, great return winner by Sviantek. Up the line. A gem of a shot. Two break points here 
for Iga. And she hit that return as cleanly as you could. 1540. And Kennan serves. Sviantet makes the return up the middle. Off forehand winner from Kennan. Keeps this game going as she saves a break point. It's 30 40. It's a tremendous winner from Sviantet just a moment ago. Still break point. Kennan, after battling along in that first set on the brink here in the second, it would seem, misses the first serve up the tee. Here comes the second. And it's into the net from Kennan. That's the second time she's double faulted on break point in this match. Sviantek claims another break and goes ahead 5 2 in the second set. And she will serve for the match here as Iga Sviantek tightens her grip, turning the screws here on this one. And uh, she is, she's rounded into form here in the second set. Don't think there's any doubt about that. First set, she might not have played as cleanly as she wanted to. Kennan had a lot to do with that. You give Kennan a lot of credit for what she did in that first set. But obviously in this second set, Iga has turned up the pressure. And now she is serving for the match to move on into a second round encounter with either Angelique Kerber or Danielle Collins. And again, either way that goes will be a fun, fun match, whoever she has to play. So they'll change ends here. Sviantek after that 68-minute first set, not quite 40 minutes into the second set, serving at 5-2. Again, has not lost a match, Sviantek, since quarterfinal in Japan in late September when she lost to Veronica Kudermetova in that quarterfinal. Been a long time since she lost. She's won all six matches she's played since then which, of course, is not that many in that span. Serves here, and it is a terrific serve, and Kennan's reply is wide, and it's 15-all. And, of course, she was on fire in the WTA finals, not even being tested against either of Shabor, Sabalinka, or Pagula. Just blew away all three of those fine, fine players in the WTA finals to end last season. 15 love serve, misses long. Passed head to head with these two is just the one match they played in the French Open final of 2020, which Sviantek won. Sviantek serves, oh my goodness, throws up a change up and a whiff by Kennan, a swing and a miss as Sviantek put nasty amount of slice on that serve. And it's 30 love. She saved the best for last here, has Iga. Two points away. Sviantek serves. Great serve again. And Kennan's reply at a sharp angle on the backhand is wide. And it's 40 love, and it's three match points for Sviantek, who had to go over an hour in the first set. Then in her first service game of this second set, it went for nearly eight minutes, somehow held on to serve. Kennan started this second set as well as she played in the first, but Sviantek has kicked it in to high gear. Serves here. Kennan makes the return. Backhand from Sviantek is long, and it will continue on for just a little bit longer at least. And when she plays like this, I'm not sure who's going to beat her. Fourth round exit here in Melbourne last year was disappointing for her. 
Two match points, serves out wide. Kennan's return is cross court, but it misses. And Iga Sviantek is able to outlast Sophia Kennan to put away another match victory. Seven straight now for Sviantek going back to that September match in Japan, the last time she lost. And Sviantek is moving on to the second round here in Melbourne. It is a hard fought. 7-6, 6-2 victory for the world's number one player, Iga Sviantek, defeating 2020 Australian Open champion Sophia Kennan. It's a tough loss for Kennan, but hopefully she can keep getting into a form here. This, I mean, she played a set, a good set and a half, and then it got away from her late. Yes, indeed. And uh, Matthew, just want to say a big thank you. Can you hear me okay, by the way? Absolutely. Good. I just uh, had to do a little jiggery pokery there. I don't know if that's an expression you're familiar with in the US. There was uh, one expression earlier. What was it? Dog's dinner that, you, that you've had to learn <laughs> and also will cite. Uh, I love the way uh, you were like, I have no idea what that means. And then the, the explanation from Jake was unbelievable uh, because the way you repeated it, I was like, yep, that's exactly what it means. And uh, yes, I, I can't even remember which player it was he was talking about. I think it was Safiulin who was making a dog's dinner of a particular match. But listen, Matthew, wonderful commentary. Um, I thought it was a very entertaining match. Uh, I can see a couple of uh, patient guys backstage who I'll be bringing forward uh, any moment. But I just want to say a big thanks to you again, Matthew. Um, probably, you know, it could have been an epic one if perhaps if Sofia had won that first set. Uh, I think yeah. it was kind of essential. But um. Uh, it was still excellent to have your uh, dulcet tones on our channel once more. Well, thank you as always. I hope to uh, hope to join again uh, as this tournament goes on, if you'll have me, of course. Uh, of course and, and of course, if, if the schedules align. But uh, this is always a lot of fun. Love getting to call tennis. Hope if everyone your, else enjoys if it. If this is your time slot, Matthew, I mean, it works very well. So, in the coming days, uh, if you see a match, you know, at, at I guess starting at 7, 8 o'clock Eastern time, either 7 o'clock on one of the sort of outer courts, or if you see an 8 p.m. Eastern time one on, on Rod Laver and you say, I would love to call that match, it's yours. Simple as that. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. We'll certainly be in touch. But thank you again, as always. Thanks for everyone uh, that kept me entertained in the comment section. Uh, you've got a great following here. Uh, a lot of fun people commenting, and uh, again, hope uh, hope hope they enjoyed it. Hope I didn't uh, get on anyone's nerves, to say the least. <laughs> Wonderful, thanks, Matthew. You certainly didn't get on my nerves, and, uh, and you're welcome back anytime. So take care. Yes, thank you. You too. As Matthew sails off into the sunset, we have some super subs. Uh, a little bit like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, although I don't know if either of my two guests uh, know who Ole Gunnar Solskjaer Owen, do you, you're on mute, by the way, Owen. Um, do you know who Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is? Unfortunately, no. Oh, sorry. On, Andre? Sorry, what's the question? Uh, do you know, <laughs> are you familiar with the name Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Nope. <laughs> we'll move on. That's that one done. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, tick. That was the first thing on my list. Uh, we'll move on. Listen, let's get to uh, this particular encounter. Owen, was it all about that tie break in the end? That's a good question because the start of the second set was pretty tight as well. Um, you know, I, I missed part of it, but I know Kennan had some break back points at 2-3. Um, so it, I feel like it didn't really get away from her until um, the back half of the second set. I would lean more towards... She came out with a great game plan, executed it very well for a set plus. It's just too hard to do that over two sets or three sets. Yes, absolutely. Andre, what are your thoughts post-match? I think it's a, it's a classic Yegish Fiontek match um, where she faces somebody who was able to, you know, keep up with her to a, an extent. Um, reminds me a bit of uh, when Andreescu pushed her in Rome. It was a similar score line. It's probably seven six six one, I think, at the end. Uh, I can't really. I don't think it came down to a specific point. I think Jantek was just better, and then Cannon just couldn't keep up. I think that was just about it. Like Cannon's game is heavily dependent on her timing. Um, 
she started misfiring a bit, got a little frustrated, and I guess that's just the way it goes. Like you guys just in such a form that it's it's hard to, you know, just keep up with the level that you need to play to to be her. So, um, I was thinking to myself, I I, uh, I even messaged in a private uh, texting on uh, Twitter, just saying like, man, I'm underestimated a lot, like him, and I thought maybe she can keep up this game. It could get messy. But in the end, just couldn't keep up. I don't think it was a key moment or, or specific timing that happened. Um, but it was just Iga Shriantek being Iga Shriantek in the end. I think maybe um, me framing that question to almost maybe a little too simplistic. It was just the spontaneous thought that came into my mind, Owen. But I, there were moments in the first set. I mean, she's serving for the first set before she knows that she's love 40 down. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, you know, she's uh, I'm just trying to remember the momentum because actually I went out to get a takeaway for the first four games. And uh, I think I came back and it was 3-1 Kennan. And I was like, oh, OK, didn't see that one coming. Eager then breaks back and I did see that coming. But what I didn't see coming was another break for for <laughs> Kennan. Should maybe future opponents, I, I get Andre's optimism regarding Eager, but maybe future opponents might go, well, she's not bageling everyone. Yeah, I mean... It's interesting, and I think it's a really hard part about being number one, is, like, the um, the blueprint on how to beat you is very highly in demand, right? Like, everyone's working on that. Yeah. And so it's not really, it's very hard, but it's not really a secret how you beat Iga. You want to rush her. You want to hit really hard returns, first and second serve, and you want to rush her forehand and keep her on the back foot. And Kennan has a game that is very capable of doing those things. And so when she broke... And when Ego was serving at 1-3 and Kennan was kind of piling on the pressure, there was a moment early on where I was sort of like, oh, crap, Ego, like, you could go down a double break here, you know? And then and then things could get really hairy. But, and, you know, all the credit to her, toughed out a deuce hold, broke back, uh, broke to keep herself in the set. But, I mean, yeah, I this is maybe getting a little too general, but I don't have her winning this tournament because I think she's going to run into players who can basically do what Kennan did, but with even more pace, um, like a, an Ostapenko or a Rabakina. Um, and I have trouble seeing Sviantek beating one or both of them. Yes, and she probably ha or may well have to, to beat both of them, because I think Arena's uh, route to the final is not too bad. And Igas is hazardous, um, including today. I mean, I, I didn't probably expect it to be quite as close, but once... Once the first set panned out the way it was, I was like, wow, this, this this route is just getting harder. And if it's Daniel Collins or Angie Kerber, of course, she beat Angie Kerber at the United Cup recently. But Angie will have a couple more matches under her belt or whatever. I, I don't expect Angie to be overwhelmed by the occasion like some people might be uh, against Eagle at the moment. I'm, I'm not predicting an Angie Kerber win or a Daniel Collins win for that matter. But Daniel Collins in Australia, we know how that can work out sometimes. And... Daniel Collins has a ceiling, which we haven't seen for about two years, by the way. Um, but she has a ceiling, which is, you know, Ostapenko-esque. And we know how Ostapenko works out. And by the way, Ostapenko is also in that path. And finally, Rabakina is also in that path. Now, a lot of tennis to happen before then. But I, yeah. I, I get where you're coming from, Owen. Um, Andre, what about Ken and what, what positives can she take from today? I mean, the fact that she when toe to toe with Shantek is pretty good. I think her timing is still there. Um, I think she, her service is underrated. I think it's pretty solid. Like if you can uh, go with like a, a streak of serves where she gets like pinpoint accuracy. I think she she's a good spot server. Uh, despite not looking at the ball, she tosses it. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, I know. But I think yeah, I, I think there's plenty of positives when you play a good match against a player that is red hot like uh, Shantek. Um to turn that she's won before is obviously always going to be a tough one. Um, yeah, I think positives is just like seeing like, hey, I played a really good game. There were opportunities that she's missed. Um, but yeah, I think that it just looking at the moments where she could have taken advantage of whatever advantage that she had are going to be the main things to work on, um, not to let um, that lead slide so many times uh, i think as owen was saying like uh, I, I think a player who's going to be more capable of uh, taking advantage of those leads is not going to let like uh, ishmael take off the hook as easily so i think for a canon it's just about um taking 
what are her good parts of her game that she did well today. I'm particularly fond of her timing and just her accuracy on her on her ground strokes. I think it, those things are amazing. And just like saying like this, this is good, um, and just trying to like okay now that you have when you when you build that advantage, just make sure that you can take that uh, and move forward. I think that's what's going to be the the positive for her is is essentially just that she played well. A couple of things, Owen. One is something that I'm sharing on the screen, obviously, right now, is you talking about um, uh, uh, the point Eager just played to get to Juice 2 3 was defensive perfection. Uh, tell us about Eager's defense uh, in that moment, but perhaps more generally. And also the serve. It's something that's been spoken about a lot in the last few months. If there's any anything you can add to that sort of debate. Sure. Um, so, yeah, the point I'm talking about in that tweet, um, Kenan had game point for four two um and she had ego on the run um and ego is defending and then she slides into this backhand that lands super deep right on the baseline kenan has to kind of bunt it back um and then ego immediately just slashes this forehand winner that was you know untouchable in insanely aggressive it was just an amazing shot and um and after um, Kenan double faulted twice, I, I think maybe that's something I would critique about her performance. You had quite a few double double faults on big points. Um, when, when she gets rattled, you can really see it, it in her game immediately. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think Iga is just a phenomenal mover and really, really good at sliding. I, I would say that Coco is faster um, and probably plays better like vertical defense, if that makes any sense. Like she's better at running shots down, but I think Iga is better at cutting them off. Um, and then, um, I'm sorry, what was your second question? Uh, the serve. Yes, the serve. Um, yeah, I think the serve is still, uh, Sviantec's biggest weakness. Um, I don't think she aims close enough to the lines on the first serve. And so when you have a big point, maybe she's break point down. I think a lot of the time, um, I'll see her hit a first serve down the middle ish and um players can attack that and i think that's not what you want of course you'd rather not have to hit a second serve but i would i don't know I, i'd kind of prefer to see her really try to win the point with that first serve and then if if she misses fall back on the second serve and trust her defense but you don't necessarily want to have to trust your defense behind your first serve um this is a bit of a tangent but i remember um in the 2011 us open final between uh djokovic and Nadal. um Quick plug, right? Writing a book about that rivalry, but um, Australian Open 2012. Uh, no, U.S. Open uh, 2011. Oh, sorry, um, sorry. It was um, so it, it was windy that day, but um, Nadal was spinning in like all of his first serves, and so he got essentially zero free points off of it. And then Djokovic broke him eleven times and beat him in four sets. So, um, and sometimes I see Iga doing something similar. Like she doesn't go for it on that first serve. And I think she's going to have to, uh, to get through these potential tricky opponents we talked about. Okay. Fair enough. What are your thoughts on Iga and the serve and anything else we've just spoken about, Andre? Are you on silent by the way, or you're on mute? Yeah. You're still on mute. Hang on. <laughs> oh, there you are. I am here. Uh, yeah, I, serve. It, yeah, it's definitely the part that she tried to make it make adjustments. It's not elite level. Um, I, I think that's one part that if she wants, if she wants to be similar in, as to Rafa Nadal in every part of her game, she's gonna have to find a way to like use it with more strategical intent uh, because she's not gonna fire aces. She's not gonna like blow opponents off the court. Um, so I don't know. I think. He, She's still young. She has um, the opportunities to try to take on uh, Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic in that department. Try to spot serve a bit better, better, and uh, uh, you know, not rely solely on just her defense to defend that that part of her game. I think it's probably one of the parts of her game that's actually mostly hold, holding her down, holding her back in on fast surfaces like um, Australian Open and Wimbledon. Mostly, I would say. I think. Um, it's it's that lack of ability to to have something to rely on when things are going a little bit awry or just to hold serve um you know because it's it's it, it it is a very important part of the game uh, on on fast courts especially say on clay like you could say break has almost the same value but on fast court you absolutely have to break because you gotta again like bringing back those, those players who are we are thinking are going to win the tournament Sabalenka or Rybakina or a player who we think is going to take her out is Ostapenko those are players that can hold serve and and 
uh, again, if she lost serve against uh, Kennan like twice or three times today or something like that, um, she was able to go back. But a player with a better serve would be able to just like take bad advantage and hold on to it. So um, Iga Shantek serve will need to uh, improve, uh, I guess, career-wise. Um, who knows? Maybe for this tournament it's going to be enough, but she's going to have to work hard, very hard to hold hold it. So, yeah, I think the serve is, is a moment or of the game where she is mostly most vulnerable, I'd say, almost. I'd love to um, uh, have a... Qu I mean, I'll, I'm going to do this off the top of my head, Owen, so uh, bear with me on this one. I, I, I could be way off, but I'd love to have a quick look at Eager's fast, slow surface comparison because this is just off the top of my head. I'd like to know... Uh, I, 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 we don't need to do it now, and we'll just let people make comments below this video when we put it out there as well, because although we're live right now, I'll probably chop this into a, a shortened version. But I'm just thinking fast surface, slow surface. I'm thinking Indian Wells is traditionally slow. Miami's traditionally fast. She's won both in the same year. I don't know what her route to the final was in those two tournaments, but I do re recall her getting to the semis in Indian Wells a year later and not playing Miami a year later. And I'm talking sort of post-2020 eager uh, as well. Um, on top of that, you mentioned a couple of those tournaments there, Andre. I think Australian Open is generally a fast surface one, and, and interrupt and correct me if I'm wrong, US Open tends to be a bit slower. Which is her more successful slam? Well, until now, it has been uh, the US Open. Obviously, she's won once there, and she's not made a final yet in Australia. Um, and Wimbledon, of course, grass court. We know the difficulty she has there. But then finally, I also think of off the top of my head, I think Madrid. Now, I'm not saying Madrid is necessarily fast clay, but it's certainly a server's paradise if you're going to get one on a clay surface. Hence Sabalenka's success there on two occasions. And it's one of the few clay corners of clay court tournaments off the top of my head that I can think of that Iga hasn't won. I think I saw a list of tournaments she's played at least twice. And uh that was there. And it's sort of again, there's a, a little Rafa Nadal thing there, Andre, and that, that he doesn't sort of have a lot of success in Madrid. So um yeah, fast court, slow court. Am I under something here, Owen? Is it? It's probably something. But I want to say I'm onto something. I don't think I'm Columbo here, or 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 something that I'm uncovering something that people probably people haven't already discussed before, Owen. Um, no, I think it's a legit point. I mean, I think she is the word I would use is more vulnerable on faster courts. I think she can absolutely still win on them. Uh, like she she still goes deep at this tournaments, but I think on clay she's you know especially slower clay. She's the favorite against everyone. And on a court like the ones at the Australian Open, I wouldn't have her as a favorite against a Rabakina or an Ostapenko, or may maybe even not against Sabalenka, uh, d depending on the day. Um, be and that's because I think these players, like with this immense power, it just becomes slightly easier for them to rush her. Um, the defense does a little bit less on a faster court. Um, you know, it's helpful to have a powerful serve that can get you more free points, which she doesn't have. Uh, so I think the faster courts sort of play to her own weaknesses and the strengths of some of her biggest rivals. Cool. Uh, Andre, anything else you want to add, uh, particularly regarding that final point? In particular, I, I do think that, yeah, I think that she would have, she would have benefited a lot more of a the game if she was lefty as well so unfortunately she isn't so she has to work with what she's got so Indeed. and she's done pretty well so far number one in the world so oh, she's doing okay fun. i mean not been listen yeah. by the way we're, we're we're probably this is how it is when you're world number one and all the rest of it and uh, and a multiple grand slam winner we sort of you know you win seven six six two in the first round but you get broken a few times we go oh oh but yeah she could easily be 12 days from now uh lifting that trophy and uh just augmenting and cementing what I think is very quickly becoming a, a legendary status within the sport. I mean, what is the cutoff point? Maybe she needs to to, to add a grass court slam or, or or something like this, but she's certainly adding to her resume. Am I, am I going a bit too big? Is, is she a legend of the sport already, um, uh, Owen? You know, I just had the thought that I think a lot of people would say that she isn't yet, but I just had the thought that I think we kind of already hold her to that standard because we're talking about all these things that she needs to improve. And here she is already with four majors and has spent a ton of time, like more time at number one in the world than any active WTA player, right? So, so, and so I think if she does improve those things, 
the sky is the limit. She could win a crazy number, like 15. And if she doesn't, she's certain to win at least a couple more um, with the game she has right now. Like, she is the best player in the world. Um, so, I yeah, I mean, I feel like if she retired now, um, we would still say in five or 10 years, like, oh, remember that streak she went on in 2022? Yeah. Like, that was freaking crazy. Um, may so maybe legend is stretching it just a little bit because we usually reserve that for, you know, Serena, Venus, big three. Um, but I feel like she's easily on that path and, you know, may maybe not the path to become one of the goats, but into that very first tier of, um, hall of famers. Yeah. I'm just having a quick look. She's, uh, I think she's 10th on the list already in her career for weeks at number one. Um, but she'll soon over, I think she'll overtake Lindsay Davenport at some point this year. She's not too far behind the American right now. So, you know, Ash Barty then at uh, in seventh place, 121 weeks. And so, yeah, I guess what, what is your definition of legendary status? You might say winning, you know, across the three surfaces, um, might be necessary. And therefore we put Andre Agassi in that category. But maybe if we go with that thing, we don't put Boris Becker or perhaps Stefan Edberg in that category. I don't think Edberg won a French. Um, but I think if you win plenty of others, you know, in general, I think if you're winning sort of five plus, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're close to it. Um, Andre, I'll give you the final word. You can you can talk about whether we're whether I'm being a bit premature on already putting her at legendary status or or, or what you think she needs to do to to, to sort of achieve that. I don't know. I think legend is a is is under discussed as a term uh, as opposed to goat. <laughs> this is definitely what she <laughs> isn't. Um, but legend, a legend is a more broad term. <sighs> it's someone we look back on. I think that's why I've uh, you know you, you you probably but but still yeah. even though we look back on it, we look back on it and we go and I, I like what Owen said about that undefeated period because actually. She might win four slams, eight slams, six slams, or whatever. If she never goes on a, on another similar run, but even if she does do a similar run, which, by the way, who knows, could continue. And if she wins the Australian Open, she'll probably be on about 25 unbeaten. Uh, and that will have encompassed both the Grand Slam and, of course, the WTA Tour Finals. I mean, she's ticking off a lot of the criteria, Andre. Yeah. I think that she, if you look at, at, as a legend, like one of the players that, definitely has uh, left her mark and there are so many others that did less than she did uh, and yet uh, you know i think even um even like say let's let's put in like a gustavo kirtan on the equation like who was who's had like a season of crazy uh stuff like back in 2000 um also won a grand slam um ranked 67 in the world i believe at the time um so some people consider him a clay legend. So, and he has done far less than uh, Shinotech has done so far in her career. So, I think she is already a legend in uh, in the sport. Um, and I guess, like Owen said, like she's she's only growing it at this point. She's just growing it to make her legend bigger. And um, how, where is this legend going to end up in the end? Like, I guess it's it's time to tell. Time will tell, actually. Yes, indeed. Uh, Marat time is, is a good kind of legend. <laughs> <laughs> time is telling on us all, I think. Um, uh, I just want to say a big thanks to both you, Andre, and Owen for joining us uh, spontaneously into that match. Uh, th thanks for having me. It's always fun to chat with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, and so Owen, I, were you a little surprised to see Andre uh, appearing? I was, yeah, because I you mentioned the, the faces backstage and... Um, and then Andre pops up, who was, uh, you know, one of my one of my very best friends in tennis and uh, mm -hmm. one of my uh, fellow podcasters. Uh, he actually uh, brought me onto the team. So, yeah, it's uh, always nice to see him pop up. Andre is Brazilian born as well. Now, I know Andre and I don't go back way back, do we, Andre? But we've crossed paths a couple of times or a few times over the last 18 months or so. And uh, to my great surprise, he was born in, in Brazil, which I didn't realize. But then, Andre, I shocked you by knowing that the Maracanã was, the stadium was very near uh, where you were born. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know close to nothing about Rio. So <laughs> you actually, you're, you're winning a lot on that, on, that, on that category. You know a lot more about Rio than I do at this point. <laughs> 
Have you have you been back? I mean, obviously you were born here, and and this is not the uh, this is not the Andre Life show, by the way. We're not we're not going to go from the day you were born all the way through. But um, did have you have you come back to Rio since you left? Uh, not really. I went back when I was four years old, but then that was it. <laughs> Doesn't Basically, really count. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right. Anyway, um, big thanks, Andre. Uh, and just a, a place that's obviously close to my heart at the moment. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we went off at that wild tangent. But I don't think anyone was uh, here in the chat to talk about uh, the Andrin's uh, uh, origins of Andre. We'll we'll do that for a, a different episode, maybe post Australian Open. Um, uh, but once again, I just want to say big thanks to both Owen and Andre for joining me. And uh, for the rest of you, uh, also in the live chat, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I don't really know why I'm telling you this because I'm going to do it again in this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
Number 10, Ange Jabeur. Number 9, Caroline Garcia. Number 8, Maria Sakkari. Number 7, Marketa von Drusheva. Number 6, Elena Svitolina. Number 10, Ange Jabeur. Number 9, Caroline Garcia. Number 8, Maria Sakkari. Number 7, Marketa von Drusheva. Number 6, Elena Svitolina. Number five, Jessica Pagula. Number four, Coco Goff. Number three, Arena Sabalenka. Number two, Elena Rabakina. And number one, Iga Sviantek. <laughs>